Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to two Call of Duty challenges in Europe. My name is Bryce. We have the Elite Series kicking off. And by kicking off, I mean actually coming to an end of our round robin stage. It's the last day of the groups. My name is Bryce. Of course, joining me here, Chris Tan. Hi, hey, Bryce. You're very excited to get into what is the last round robin stage. Of course, it's going to be very, very interesting. One group in particular is looking quite close for that final playoff spot. I'm sure we're going to be talking about that in just a second. But yeah, it's, uh, it's really come down the wire for some of these teams. It certainly has. We'll see how this has all gone down so far over the last week and a bit. Of course, Team War so far undefeated in Group A. Then Five Media Clan and Team Falcons, both three and one. Then we've got Team Moon in that four spot, two and two. Pretty good at the bottom end of it. Unfortunately, Nocturne and Team Higgy yet to get a win so far. And unfortunately, that can't last because they have to play each other. So somebody has to get one today, Tan yeah but unfortunately for them they can't finish in that top four which advances in the playoffs which is the important thing and a one of four record is not going to get you any further than team moon who at worst are going to be two and three so group a is completely locked in over the other side of things though you can see it's pretty similar into the top two four no teams coming in with omit and clutch rain who are going on to be playing each other today as well revive gaming are secure also but looking on the other side of things k2 esports and coca both sitting one and three and guess what they're both playing each other Bryce. so that is an all-out war for that final playoff spot in group b big big game it certainly is and of course we've looked at the groups this is how we are going to watch it as well you can see at 2 p.m or if you're in, the, in the uk 7 p.m for us core cat versus k2 esports we are watching that game because it is the battle for group b to get in to that playoff bracket very important game for these two teams we'll see how they get on ton yeah, it should be an interesting one. I think Coca, you know, I've got some people in there who have been around for quite some time, whereas K2 is more of a resurgence from some of these new players kind of coming up. And I say new players, they have been around for a little while, but definitely Coca has the most storied players in there. But looking at the other game that we have going on at the same time, Kutrain against Omit starting just ever so slightly later, we will definitely be dipping in and out of that one and definitely be able to catch the end of it because I'm pretty sure that one will, will go relatively far. I would say I'm not too sure if the distance is, is where I'd see it. But it should be a very, very good game. Both those teams sitting at four now. Yeah, they're going to be battling out for that top spot as well. And then after that, we have the North American side. But we won't delve too deep into those games, not just because they are about four hours away, but also because our wonderful colleagues on the North American side, I'm sure, will be going into in depth when that show starts. But of course, let's talk a little bit about the teams we are going to watch, including K2 and how good they've been, Tun yeah they'd be very interesting to keep an eye on i think we've only managed to see them once on the our screens and the winner we were in club train and got absolutely drilled uh, but speaking of some of the players on k2 esports a couple of them have really impressed me i think coves and Isaac have been looking good drills are solid as well they're, they're a decent enough roster if they can do something here today finish in playoffs i think they have to take that as a win see what you can do in it i think it, it feels like they are outclassed in the sense of going up against some of these top top teams that they're quite far away but they're in the mix and that's all you can kind of ask for a couple of players who haven't necessarily been around the longest amount of time kind of finding that come up now coming into your first well in and around your first season as a, a professional or semi-professional player on the challenger side of things i should say a, a top four finish will be a good job so let's see if k2 can get something going here they haven't necessarily had the best of times the only win coming up against 22 esports and that goes for these two squads so far so what can they do up against each other i'm not 100 sure it should be a good game as it goes but for k2 they have not necessarily been a surprise package, but somebody who have come through and done okay. So let's see if they can finish in that top four. Yeah, this team can make it into the playoffs. So we'll see how they do. Of course, close to Isaac Coves and Drills. We'll round out your roster for K2 Esports. Can they overcome the team they are facing today, though? Neither side has been bathed in glory, but of course, making the playoffs a very different side. Corkat will be the team they're going up against. Sleeve, Maestro, Wardy, and Chunky Boy. A man reminds me of myself, but we'll <laughs> see whether or not they can get forward on this one, Tun. And, and you can see what I was meaning by the more storied roster. Sleeve is Denza, Maestro, Wardy in there with Chunky Boy as well. Wardy, obviously, formerly a, a New York subline, has going in there in a sub spot. Uh, Denzo, we know he's been around for a very long time. Keeps retiring, keeps coming back. He's just he, he, again, mate. You just can't, you can't get away from it anymore, can he? He keeps saying that he's done, but he's just uh, right back into it. But <laughs> yeah, look, I mean, realistically, if you look at the rosters, these two teams are very, very different in terms of experience. So, Corecat, have they got that experience to carry them through this one up against K2 Esports? We will find out across these five maps, Bryce. 
We certainly will. This is how the series is going to go down. Obviously, the bands have come through. That means Karachi Hardpoint is up first. Then High Rise Search and Destroy. High Rise Control Skid Row Hardpoint. And if we get all the way to the beautiful climax at the end, Karachi Search and Destroy will end it for us. One of these teams will make it through out of the groups. The other will not, unfortunately, turn. Yeah, I know. That's a, a tough thing to take. But if they're coming down to the final moment, at least makes it very, very dramatic, right? We do uh, we do like the drama on this side of things on challenges. And, well, we like drama and Call of Duty full, full stop. So it should be interesting to see. Having a look over towards the maps, Karachi, double high rise. Okay, so it is it is interesting. Of course, we're only getting to see a, a small sample size of both these two teams. Very standard kind of map set coming on through. We don't see, I want to say, a great deal of high rise search and destroy, to be honest with you, but it should be an interesting one to see between these two teams. We're not far away from getting this one up and running. And yeah, it's a shame we've only got two games today, but it sets us up nicely for playoffs, which already starts now. Yeah, it really does. Of course, we'll be trying to go a little bit back and forth to check out how those other games are going. Of course, the game that we will be jumping into is, of course, Clutch Rain versus Omit EU. And that means we will just have a little inkling of what's going over on that side as this gets underway. But before we talk about our second game, our first game is about to kick off. K2 Esports versus Core Cat. Karachi Hardpoint. This one's for all the marbles, Tun. It is. It's a good, I mean, it's a good way for both these two teams to close it. You know, you get your one win underneath your belt and it's just worked out very, very nicely for us and everybody at home that this is the game that is going to make the difference of one of these two teams in the playoffs. I, I mean, look, if I was to put my money on anybody, it would definitely be Colcat in this scenario. K2 have had some tough performances, but for Colcat, look, they've got some very, very good players who have been at the very top of the game. Are they going to be able to do anything with that experience though here on Karachi? Decent enough start. They've got spawns heading over towards P2 if they want them. Would like to keep a hold of that with some red control, but P1 off right. 30 seconds to go. Yeah, they're a bit of a bar post sides. Not really happy with their positioning on it so far. And drills, drills, Maestro. And if they can get into this point, they're in a good position for this rotation. You can already see Maestro going for that rotation through the back alley. Trying to find a couple of kills. Still spawns towards the alley side. Coming in for the side of K2. Uh, for Kolkata, I should say. P2 should be locked in. Next couple of kills are going to be important. Keep an eye on Izaki. He is the one that's going to be making the push around from behind. So keep an eye on this gunfight. That will go down. Because if he can find one kill here, we'll break things open. Isaac just jumping through. And this is cause issues. You can see they're waiting for it. Great patience there by Chunk. Doesn't know where he is. Looks for him eventually. And that is a huge play in the end. Completely locking down that time. Yeah, just about. I, I mean, you've got to presume that somebody will be trying to make that fly. Irrelevant of that, Kokat will pick up the beginning. 20 seconds. 40 seconds still to go here. Kokat's still locking this one down. K2 to really find any sort of inroad. Really nice hold so far. You're going to be thinking about rotation in a second, but it looks like K2 may have one more go. Denza says no, thank you. We'll have to back them down. Kokat now aren't going to have themselves a healthy lead of around 60 points by the time we do get over towards P3, which should be K2 Esports. Desperately trying to get him out there as well, but the trophy and they're not going to do anything to him. Has to back away. The protection is everything now for K2. You can see pressure coming in from Corkout. They're trying to find a way through onto this. Looks like they're going all the way through market in top three to try and penetrate this defense. Of course, they don't have a man yet. Chunk is still coming off of that last hill. Slow rotation over. Hill's just popped. Lack of top three control for K2 Esports might hurt them here, though. Denzel can push through and gets through. All of a sudden, you've got, to be honest, swivel towards the back. Good shots coming in from Tenza. The rest of the team can start to push through and, like, a knife through butter. Just far too easy. Callouts coming on through. Denzel on a five spree. Corkat looking very, very solid in the hard points so far. Wonderful break. I said top P3 or top three, sorry. I didn't have enough control, and all of a sudden, you're caught under it. Really, really good break coming in from Corkat, but they got to defend themselves. 23 seconds left to go. Practice still coming in from K2 Esports. They want this time back, but not in the kill feed. Not getting the bodies they want. And with two going through, there will be a little bit of a flank from Maestro. The last player is going to be up top, and that's jumped down and backed off. And has managed to get in, but Wardy to the rescue. And that is a 100 points clear now. As Corkat look for this rotation. Of course, this next one, Tan, is not easy to get points on. No, it is a scrappy one. You're really just positioning for the next hill that's coming up over towards Junk. That's where you want to really be spawning towards. You can see the side of the map that K2 Esports have control of. That's kind of where you want to be. You can pick up even 10, 15 seconds on this hill. You take it as a win. Just about trying to keep the other team off. Dens are going to maybe overzealously go for that challenge. Isaac will find a couple. Time being sucked here by K2 Esports, which will be important time for them. Only 40 seconds on the clock. 35 seconds gone. Or two go, I should say, over towards P4. 
Some stuff coming in here from Maestro, just trying to keep them up. But you have to swap, swap those spawns if you possibly can do. See, Denza BSD already making sure that that happens. They get the spawn out for all they lose a good chunk of time here at P4. Spawns available for the next hill coming up. I'm just going to try to get that positioning for, and I think K2, they have an opportunity. Denza to hold the line, but hasn't got all of the angles and maybe cut down here. Denza will get the first one, but runs straight into the pre fire and the nade and will fall for K2 Esports. They're not the scrap time, but the rotation is everything they want right now. 60 seconds here. Bring this game back to a knife edge. Good break to come on through. Good transitional kills, but you're losing control of the P3 area, and all of a sudden you can start getting pushed from the coop side. Just have to try and lock it down if you can't see any kill as a bonus. Can't find it. Denza will find him, and all of a sudden the break comes through. Still a solid lead for Core Cap, but for K2 Esports, they can take some solace in the fact they were able to pick up a couple of kills over towards this transition, making more than a couple of their three. Maestro, what can he do to lock this one down? Finds one, can't find the second, but will slow down K2. Core Cap are back in numbers because of the spawns coming on through. 25 seconds remaining on this one. Coca probably haven't done as well in terms of the points as they would have liked here. Brycey, really good gritty play coming in from K2. Yeah, not a lot of time for either team. If we're being perfectly honest, eventually K2 will get it after losing so much time on the lock-in they could have had. Eventually, they're not even going to get the scrap time onto that one. If we head back into a second set of rotations. Of course, T1 is about to pop again. It is very much a wow. commanding lead for Coca as Maestro finds three and gets traded out by a nade. And now is he going to be able to keep an eye on where these spawns are coming up through? Are they going to presume that P2 spawns are going to belong to K2? I think so. He's nice to spawn back up. That really does indicate exactly where K2 should be as well. Morty just trying to stay alive towards top three. Some good time can be soaked at this P1 hill though, Bryce. If you do get a good lockdown, which is now coming on through, your ARs have got irons up. And all of a sudden, it's a hard break. K2 esports bleeding points at P1 here. Desperately trying to kill him. Desperately trying to stop this as well, you can see. But they are not finding kills. And without kills, there's no positioning. And without positioning, you can't get the kills. And they are just being cut to ribbons. The issue now is that P2 is upon us. And they aren't here either. Chunk will hold the wall. There's the first. Looking for the second. There's the second as well. And there is nothing but misery for K2 on this map at the moment. Worked out perfectly. P2 rotation comes in. Chunk with a couple of streaks to be used. Of course, just the cruise missile. 180 now has been hit from Coca. Can't quite win it here over towards P2, but if the holders is good as it was last time around, they can pretty much get this one secured. Chunk just trying to lock it down. It's a seven spree. The eighth will be a clean four down there for Coca. Really, really good job. K2 Esports just not able to keep up right now. I haven't found anything. The only little bit of solace they can take is that this game cannot be won here on P2. But it has gone from a close game to a not close game at all. Chunk is now in a nine streak. There is nothing for K2 on this map. They cannot find a kill. Eventually, a trade comes through in the drills, but 28 seconds left on this P2. Wardy still holding them away, and this is a nightmare scenario. Just an absolute disaster. And now, if the ends, I can find this rotation as well. And then that would have just been some sort of sick joke, to be honest with you, for K2 Esports. Things not working out now, spawning over towards the backside as well. So Kovs is going to have a job to do yet. Need to try and lock down top three if they can. It's going to be 17 points away by the time we get up towards P3. And Kovs is going to lock this down. Korkat have been so much better here. The transition started to come through. Kovs can't find a goddamn thing. Isaac will find one. But Korkat find their way into the hill. They're 13 seconds away, Brycey. It has been a massacre. It has been wow. one-sided. It has been a run away. There was a time when we said K2 could put it back on P3. That has not appeared as a different gear has been reached. The 100-point club for K2 Esports. Core Cap put them in the bin. Domination in every single facet. Out-rotated, out-gunned, out-pointed. Core Cap, very, very good start to this series. If you, I mean, if you're K2, look, I mean, we've seen them in hard points before struggle. I think, you know, they do find a lot of success in search and destroy, and they're going to have to now because that was a very, very one-sided. If we do have to see another half point map, I think you know where you'll be putting your money in this one. If it, we said that Coca are going to look like the stronger team here, that looks like the case in map number one. Really, really good performance. That's just the best way possible to kick off a series when you're fighting for that top four, a dominating map number one win. Certainly was, and realistically it was a close game at points we said if they held one of those rotations k2 could have come right back into it the problem started on that next set of rotations as soon as we hit p1 again essentially they found nothing chunk went on a 10 kill streak from p1 to p2 and you can see it 
right there on the statistics that we've got it just got so far out of hand damage so far towards core cat it they just blew them out of the water time yeah i mean look at it you can see across the board it's just 18 cent from chunk 70 and then from Denz, uh, Wardy going 21. I mean, Ma Maestro is the, is the worst one in terms of actual kills and deaths, and he's sent a 13 and 10. So a very, very convincing map number one on the slaying battle, rotation battle, and other points battle, which is all that matters realistically. Very, very dominant. But high rise search and destroy, you couldn't find yourself in a very different mode or map to what map number one was. So let's see if K2 can maybe turn it around here. I think I, I want to say that they have forced some teams to round number fives in high rise control as well, where they're going to have to bring a lot better than what we've seen in map number one here as we load into high rise. It needs to be significantly better, Bryce, if I'm honest with you. <laughs> well, we'll see. SMD is the difference maker. It is the game mode that many teams can come and fight back from a bad respawn on. And as we start this off, keep in mind this first round plays a little bit different. There are no trophies available on the map yet, so everybody's being a little bit cautious about the nades flying about. Yeah, it's a it's a dangerous pr proposition, isn't it? You know, you've got to be careful of the pro pins. Your chance was pointing out over the CDL there. KD is uh, quite ridiculous at this moment in time. It's just not something you want to happen to you in search and destroy, especially though. Died to one of them and control it's not the end of the world. But looking at this now, it's who sports have found themselves with lots of control over towards B. Chunk could do with maybe finding the route through here. They do have control of the site, but you have to find a moment to plant the bomb. Still looking. K2 Esports. Can't get this plant down, but Chunk just checking. Nobody there yet. Packs off as well. And the worst possible COD timing as he checked. And now that bomb will go down. Probably going to be a little bit upset. But he's like, I just checked this. Now the first blood still hasn't happened as wow. Chunk tries to find his. And nobody being aggressive to try and find that weak kill that potentially could have come on through. Now, K2 Esports are going to play this one patiently, but they have to be careful. Any checks starting to come in through. You now gain control of the site if you're Cold Cat. 23 seconds remaining. Denzel will find one. All of a sudden, the net's starting to close. Next kill was going to be massive. Maestro can find it. Clousy's taken down, and there was only one player left alive. Maestro knows exactly where he is as well. The gunfight comes through from Clousy. We're not going to be able to do much from that already being diffused and for k2 that it, it felt like you know they had control they got the bomb down and then just completely give the site up i would have liked to see them maybe sit tight a little bit i know it's a bit awkward in and around that area but maybe if they push together try and win a gunfight and then go from there they went very very passive as soon as that bomb went down and that might have hurt them a lot there Bryce. yeah i think uh just not having that trade available around that first little flurry could have slowed down everything that core cat gave to him but k2 they couldn't hold on to it in the end they did get that bomb down clean but realistically just not able to convert anything after opportunity now for core cat to go two to zero up as they have the attack will this be a similar hit towards b it looks like maybe a hit towards a ton kind of potentially find a break here stone's going over keep an eye out for the propane just nice and slow to kick things off here my strength can you find anything in this one? One and one right now. Probably taken down over towards the left-hand side. But it's still steady from Corkout looking to try and find a pick before they make a move. K2 Esports not wanting to offer them any advantage. Maestro just hopping and hoping. There we go. There we go. <laughs> it's the yep. propane. It finds Clownsy. And now you can see Corkat. All right, all right, let's make a move. We have numbers. We can go for the trades. We can keep pushing forward. And Dan's is just going to get the worst timing. Drill takes him down before Chunk trying to get through into this one. Does manage to get away as well as he has been tailed. Isaac going for it as the reach out comes through for Chunk. Another huge kill for them. Now a three versus one. Coves will bring this back to a two versus one. But is it too little, too late? Hell, he's going fire for just a second. Wanted to find the kill in a second to potentially be offered. Early does good shots coming through on, on towards Chunk. And all of a sudden, he's got Wardy to deal with as well. This bomb will go down. Looking to try and get the angle on Wardy. He won't offer him up anything else more than he needs to. Going to go for the wide pick here. Yeah, can he deal with him? Good shots coming in from Coves. Phenomenal. Now a 1v1. And with that chow, with that opportunity, he isn't going to find any more. Unfortunately, he tries to make the hero play. And almost had it. The fact that it was a 1v1 gunfight several times. But Corkat just ice up wardy pushes goes for it figures out where he is and that'll be two to zero ton yep solid a little bit scary for a second really good shots coming in from coves on the chunk specifically really really nice but unfortunately one good gunfight doesn't win you around a search and destroy or it doesn't the majority of the time wardy sitting at three and zero as pointed out coca very very much in the driving seat here now by ck2 esports 
need to find some sort of answer very very shortly things can start to get out of hand you lose this next round of search and destroy you got smoked on the hard point doubt can start to creep in look like a bee head gonna come through from k2 once again they did manage to get control of the site last time this chunk gonna be able to find something here over towards this side but the side of cold cap before that happens this time maestro absolutely drilled him and now with that first blood it's a little bit more difficult for K2. Chunk's going to check this again. Find the fuzz. Actually, going to shout for the second wow. as well. Feeling himself. Corkat, an absolute blitz there on that map. 3 0. Oh. Looking phenomenal. Maestro just holding down the outside from the back window. And it just gives onus for Chunk to push into the site. Rival nine in hand. It's the cleanup crew coming on in. Corkat looking very, very good here in the search and destroy. My word, this is rolling a very, very fast 3-0. to zero. We might get to see the entire game from Cotrain and Oma at this stage, Brycey. Yeah, it is getting very, very one-sided. Of course, K2 have had their opportunities, but opportunities doesn't really show on the scoreboard. Let's see, though, if they can find a way back into it. From the fence, Wardy going for the low drop. Already they've got first blood an opportunity to find something here nobody watching for him does he see the gun barrel no he's gonna get one no he's not pulled out of the fire back to a three versus three. Oh, you should really find that kill on the clouds he's dead the rights all that extra would have done it oh well Clousy eventually is gonna fall here anyway to maestro who is starting to beam from up top is gonna take some shots though big push came in from isaac is he gonna get some bad timing yes he is chunk is there to take him down now it is two versus one for corpse to try and find again All about timing this. All about finding in another good shot on the chunk. Takes him down. Then to one versus two. Goes for the chow because he's weak and not able to get the snap before he gets taken out. And it has been like that a couple of times now. Just a small opportunity. Almost had it. This chow was not as clean as Denzel would have liked. Look at that. Bullets going a little bit wide. But hey, enough is enough. Yeah, really, really good job from Denzel. Though. For all that, it wasn't necessarily the cleanest of gunfights from him. At the same time, to then have that that presence of mind to make sure you push out. You've already been told from your teammate that he's weak. So even though you have that bomb down, you can be defensive. Whilst he's weak, you might as well challenge him, right? Cork out. I've got to be feeling it irrelevant of whatever which way the rounds do go. They'll feel confident in their ability. Currently, 4-0 to zero up here in the search and destroy. It was a smoke show on the hard point. And now for K2 Esports, setting back maybe a little bit more passively. Drills is getting the move on over towards this B-side once again, which seems to be their favoured site. But they haven't been able to find anything that's quite stuck yet. Seems that they've had a few times. Drills, though, takes a nade. This time, Clousy is overwatching and does get Denza. They weren't going to fall for the same trick twice that Chunks pulled on them. But speaking, Chunk is underneath. Who's going to go down? K2 can get around here. This is done. And this is looking like they will get around. They have eyes on Maestro at any stage here. Can't find this one. Oh, and he can't find bloody anything. My word. Absolutely smoked. K2 Esports find themselves a very convincing run to get themselves on the board, but is it too little too late? Good shots coming in from Isaac. Just a snapper. A headshot multiplier towards the end. Wouldn't have hit. Nicely done. Find themselves around, but as mentioned, Bryce, you fall one down find yourself maybe getting into this game a little bit late well the best thing is there's never too late to get yourself in this game they could take the next three maps and be very happy but it is a long way back they haven't really shown us they can take it there have been a couple of 1v1s that could have gone their direction so don't count them out quite yet isaac on overwatch looking for anybody popping up that window hasn't done so far corkat slowly but surely trying to get a bit of map control A lot of presence in the middle of the map. That grenade's not going to tickle. Then he's going to have to back on down momentarily. Joe's now pushed up as well. Oh, not that much, actually, if anything. But just keeping an eye on the flanks potentially coming on through. And it looks nice if it is going to be a hit coming from bottom blue. In towards bottom B side. Drills is going to be important here for the team. If we can find anything, that would be a bonus. It's just going to back on down. Smart play from him. Doesn't need to overcharge anything. Corkat running out of ideas. 45 seconds. Oh, Clousy was hoping for it. The reach has got to come through as well, but Clousy just holds the pre-aim. Yes, that first blood. Corkat have found nothing here that they would wanted to. 
Eventually, Chunk will find trails, but that bomb is now going to have to be brought across. 25 seconds. Got to do something pretty quickly about this. As they're going to be holding down propane, but the push is going to come through. That was actually the bomb carrier as well, so Wardy will find that. All of a sudden, they can go any which way they want, but it's going to come down to Coves. You can find two, oh. and it's a three coming in from Coves. My word. The snap at the end, it's all about Coves again. 4-2 to two to Colcat. Okay, two are finding their way back into this one. Everything they needed, they did go for a little bit of a wild chow. I'm not going to lie to you. Diving into the enemy spawn with 20 seconds left to go on s &D. And that has meant that's another round on the board here for K2 Esports. The S&D is not done. Not quite yet. Bringing themselves back into it. Covers can find themselves a few more kills here. Maybe try and get something going in terms of a cruise missile there. That will definitely help. Could be out. They find this round. It could be massive. But if they lose it, they will find themselves one round away. From going 2-0 to zero down here, Bryce. Be very, very careful. They've been presented an opportunity, but they need to make the most of it. Why is it going Overwatch? Trying to see if he can pick out an opportunity, let alone a player. Those also waiting. They are desperate to find a pick here. The information knows where Marshall's going to be. He's hoping Wardy pops out of this. It's clearly been called. Wardy, back to the wall and elevator. Spot goes for the Chal. How on earth has he won that gunfight? And all the Cove's good work in the previous round has been completely undone. Colcat back into a comfortable position. Things were getting a little bit squeaky, but all of a sudden 5-2 up. Seemingly cruising if it wasn't for Cove's. On the other side of things, managing to find a 1 versus 3, but there we go. The fifth and, well, maybe penultimate round coming through for Colcat. 2-0 lead in this very, very important game will be a very solid thing to have one round away from finding it. Well, let's see. K2 Esports showed us a sign of life, but they need more than that now. Has to be flawless. Has to be four rounds on the bounce. And that first step starts here, but it is going to be aggressive from Corkat Wardy. He's flying through. There is a team kill from K2. Wardy is so far forward. The dead science is also going to be thrown out. No, to the player is caught off guard. That cover does not go in his favor. Bomb carrier sitting very, very far back here. Benz is just waiting on potential moments to be presented. But Wardy really has made some good inroads over towards this A side. If you like to see them do something with it, it's going to mostly cover the little bit over towards top propane. Not going to be offered it, but may well get traded. You can see the spot that Isaac has found himself in. Just going to be waiting on this push coming through. Wardy will get bullets in, but that will be that. But now is going to come in here as well. And oh, only for Denza to just about find that kill. Isaac will get taken down. It's a three versus two. Coves in this clutch scenario again. A one three. versus three. Will find the first. That's the easy one. Smoke out. Wants a little bit of a gap between these players. Wants more 1v1s. Knows where one of them is. Knows where the second is. Here he goes. No, doesn't know where that player is. I thought he caught a glimpse of him. It is not to be. And Corcat will win that S&D. Cove's unable to get that clutch in. And it's a standout performance from him for K2. Unfortunately, that not gone onto the scoreboard. 6-2 in the end. Just really comfortable. Honestly, it, it comes down to some rounds from Cove's that he really helps the team out with. Of course, that one versus two. That came in with a three-piece on top of it. But really nothing to write home about. It's been such a shame because, you know, we were building this up as the two teams who are fighting out for that fourth spot. But one of them looks a lot more likely than the other. Look, we had some inkling that Kokat would look the stronger team, but I wasn't too sure it would look this one-sided. A very dominant map number one, comfortable in map number two. A long, long way back for K2 Esports now. It is. A little bit of signs of life, I've got to say kind of felt like the hard point to me same thing k2 esports looked capable looked like they had the opportunities to bring it back some way and coves really was trying to do it himself you've got to remember there was what two 1v1s in fact three 1v1s that last one we just didn't get an opportunity to see him but gunfights that could have gone a different way and changed how that map went down but when the luck's not on your side you got to hope for great gameplay all the time didn't happen for them. 2-0 to zero down the series. You are right, though. Corkat do look like a better caliber of team right now. 100%. I mean, you look at who they have on their roster. You look at the experience 
in terms of line events in terms of big events we've got line winners in europe sitting here as well in this squad we've got challenges winners in here as well look i mean they have everything possible to have a team that is going to work together but i mean for k2 it just seemingly is a little bit much for them to deal with look it's not done yet it isn't but those maps one and two would probably indicate to us that it probably is with the way that these have been going it's not like if there were close maps and then you were finding yourself two to zero down look we've seen plenty of times in multiple games of call of duty things get turned around but this doesn't feel like one of those games in any stretch of the imagination right now yes okay they were starting to potentially find a way back in but i have seen k2 on this map specifically uh last week i think i remember we were watching them at some stage as one of our secondary games and i'm pretty sure that they were taking five media clan to a round number five so five obviously a very good team can they do that again here yeah, though it was high morris control so obviously it is more defensively sided can you manage to do it here to keep yourselves in challenges late season one let's find out yeah it's a it's a long kind of road to get back into this point but there's an awful lot on the on the plate for them here realistically they've not had the greatest time so far and giving this opportunity to realistically have an opportunity still to get into that playoff series for them as well but of course with those first two have been done the controller is going to be up next as well as the rest of the games we've got going on in playoffs right now but what we're going to do is go to a quick break when we come back there will be the control between k2 esports and core cat so don't go anywhere we'll see you right after this
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Call of Duty Challenges Elite. It is a short break, but doesn't matter because the gameplay is upon us. If you haven't seen everything so far, K2 Esports and Corecat are going against each other in the groups for a chance to get the playoffs. At the moment, though, it's all Corecat. They have made a magnificent effort today to get the playoffs. Great map one and two. Map three could seal the deal, Tom. Yeah, they've been fantastic here in this series. Every single time they've needed to find those moments in terms of rotations, clutch kills in the search and destroy, they have found them. K2 Esports have been made to make it be made to look very, very ordinary here, Bryce Ian. Oh, good start here for Koka in this control would be wonderful for them as well. Really turning it on when they've needed to. Yeah, oh, BSD or oh, Denzet. Couldn't quite find that kill there. But all of a sudden, a few players do fall here for Koka. K2 Esports can find their way up the map and maybe get them pinned in. But not quite. Wardy will find one back. Nice looking. And there's going to be a few kills going down. Unfortunately, there will be a team kill as well. Drills trying to push forward. This is all trade so far. The clock hasn't really stopped for very long from either side. And K2 Esports looking to push them back. Good defensive hold so far. Three kill lead. Kept them away. No takes to speak of if you are Kokat. Although a couple of kills falling through now may well just help you ease yourself out of your spawn. That's the only one left momentarily. Chunk will be dealt with. Push over towards the B side. Now starting to come on through though. Quasi. May just continue to try and survive down this side just to try and cut off the head of the snake. So you get rid of Chunk, you keep him off the respawn. Really good defensive hole from K2 Esports. Can they do so for another 30? Big win. Again, Maestro in though. 10.6 seconds remaining. Jules will be holding off the reinforcements if he keeps doing it though and will. Huge effort. Only two kills, but they could be important. And Woody takes him down. They are trying to get this out of it. Coach does not want them to get this wow. point out. And there we go. Huge effort to get on the B point. Isaac with the pre-aim. And now a last hurrah. On to A. The lives are not too dissimilar though. If they can hold something down, well, yeah, it's not going to happen for them. K2 Esports. Looking like they are going to get their first, well, real decent round in this game. It feels like they've had nothing. But it's a good defensive hold. Not a single tick to speak of if you have Kokat. A wonderful, flawless hold from Kitty Clousy. My God. A snap onto the first player. Insane place. Coming on through K2. Lock it down. I gotta say, K2 did a great job of just holding them off the points in the time. It kept being mixy. But it wasn't to the advantage of Kokat at any time. K2 with the kills on the defense. Can they find something here? Bear in mind as well. Not a lot of ticks there for Corcat. K2 Esports could technically take the lead, even if this goes 1-1, just by getting a few points on the board. Now let's see if they can find the ticks. Still a lot more back for them, but absolutely the kind of start they needed to the control, right? You needed to have yourself a solid one. If you go 1-0 down control on the defensive side, already you're kicking yourself. But I have found some inroads over towards the B side, and you're very, very right. Any tick is a bonus here for them, and it looks like they may well find one if girls can continue to stay alive. We'll keep that pressure on. Has some help from his teammates. That first tick, not going to quite go in. Cubs, it's taken down. But Drill's keeping that pressure on. It's important. I don't know he's going to be here. Doesn't matter. Still makes the kill. Steve keeps on moving. And he did it last time on the defense. There's some of the attackers just trying to get as many away as possible. And now sub base has appeared on our screens. I'm guessing we're looking at the game going on. And we're back to the control. <laughs> that other game, we will be definitely keeping an eye on that one very, very shortly. This one... For all that close control hasn't been close in the series. Second tick about to go through for K2 Esports though. So making a lot better showing on this attacking side than what we've seen from Kolkat. Shank's trying to make the jump. Not the easiest thing in the world. But we'll find one. Looking for the second. Pays off surely and it does. Chunk with the parkour will get them down, but they've already got B locked in. And now he flies over through blue. Almost gets caught sprinting. Flies out with the MCW. And now on the other side of it, here's the hard point. Cut train versus on EU. Vortex is going to be in the P1 ton. Oh, we're in amongst it, mate. Honestly, we just casting two damage. Oh, my God. Yeah, we'll go back to K2 as well. We're all amongst it. <laughs> the other game starting, as you can see. We'll keep an eye on how, how that one's going on. <laughs> Denzo could find a couple of kills. And for all of a sudden, that K2 Esports did find themselves a pushover towards this piece. And they've now been pinned back in the spawn, Bryce. So not looking too hot on this attacking run. But I think it's important to note three ticks coming through from k2 on this one so the capture point over towards b belongs to them they will have that advantage if we do head into a round number five but a long way to go and uh just trying to clear the line finds one as well that's a very open position though <laughs> gets all the way down and they are pinned 
Still a minute left on the clock, though. K2 Esports still has a decent amount of lives as well. If they can break this, they will have the opportunity to get back out of it. Maestro holding the angle. There's a slide. Just make sure they know where this player is. That player will go down. And there is a sneaky player. Let's go all the way out. Drills. The lone warrior, the Rambo. They need him to be more. He's been seen <laughs> running for his life. I think as soon as they can see that they found those three kills and nobody's seen drills, the comms will start to come through. Pocat will spin around. Three ticks. Still though. Okay, so you get nothing else from this round. You can take it as a minor win and on the 13 versus three. I feel like we've seen a team win recently, Brycey, but I don't think it's going to happen for K2 Esports this time around. Yeah, a little bit of a, a daunting prospect for any team. And Jungle take down one. They've got a player left. It's Drills. 5.6 seconds left to go. Even with that kill, you cannot get to the point in time. It will be tied up. But like I said before, this one started. Realistically, it's about the ticks at this point when you've just tied it up like that. And that actually should put uh, K2 in the advantage, right? Yeah, 100%. They will be heading into that third round one apiece, of course. But if you do go to that round number five, the team with the most ticks gets a hold of def defense, which is inherently stronger when it comes down to high rise. And well, the majority control maps, to be honest with you. So let's see. So a lot of cold duty left to be played here. Can two K2 Esports clutch up, though, in map number three and give us something on offer? And can co op can get themselves a three to zero win to qualify? Be a nice feeling heading into tomorrow. Order, can they find something here in this attacking round? It's a much better start. Now, for all that, these ticks might make a difference. Of course, if we do head to a round number five, if it care to, you've got to force it. Look at this. Just the kills all fall into the way of Korkad. And Isaac had to make that kill. Had to try and give them a little bit of breathing room. Onto this point here. They have got a stack on it, so it's going a bit faster here. Got to be careful. Those nades are oh, still doing a little bit of damage. They try to check every single angle. As K2 Esports come flowing through this map. And Denzel pushed over towards this A's side. Hasn't really been able to help out, but all of a sudden finds himself in a position where he can maybe do something for his team. A capture now starting to come on through, and there's just absolutely no way to expect somebody in a helicopter behind him. Not going to happen. Girls actually down low, blue side. Push over towards B, starting to come through here again for Kolka, who could do with this been blowing up so all of a sudden that's not going to work out for k2 esports on that side of things kill starting to flow on through we'll see for k2 though and this is where it gets a bit tense you can see that time remaining k2 want to lock this back in like they did last time they've let a player through onto this point one last swing potentially to stop this i don't think they're gonna be able to kills fall it is now dangerous for k2 they do not have that many bodies onto it drills has done what he has done over and over again though he has pushed the spawn and is keeping them just out of wow. reach one hp for chunks in a dream finds coves and where's the calls you gotta know he's gonna be there still good snaps coming in from chunk who can find three Incredible place from him, and that might just be the pressure that Kalkat needs. B is now secured. Maestro is starting to piece, and you're in a good setup here to maybe get something going over towards that A side. One player is out. That is Klausi. If they can find him, this is a really bad spot for K2. No, no. Klausi will get one, and that just stopped it a second, but unfortunately, oh, the rest no. of the team is dropping as Wardy <laughs> will find three in the spawn. An absolute nightmare here for K2. Wardy goes to work on a sixth streak. Not going to be a seven. That's Maestro stealing the kill, but there is the seventh looking for the eighth. Will eventually be taken down, but A is rocketing forward. Second tick is going to be in. There is nothing for K2 Esports to do here, surely. You can get caught in a spawn trap on both sides of things. Wardy really putting the pressure down. Fantastic work from Korkat. Get the attacking round. And those three ticks that K2 Esports managed last round. Looks like absolutely nothing all of a sudden. Really, really good job. And it just started from Maestro. Really, and himself and Chunk getting themselves in good positions. Keeping that pressure on. And as soon as he can get a player in to clear them out. Then you're all of a sudden in a really, really bad spot. If you're the defensive team. Who now have to go on the attack and find a round to force a round number five. And to extend the series potentially. K2 Esports in the worst of positions now. Can they win their attack? Can they write themselves a Cinderella story to make it to playoffs from this point? A daunting prospect at the best of times. Chunk far up on the map and he has been lights out so far for Korkad and just winning gunfights. You don't expect him to win. Oh, Drill's really going to win as well. Push over towards it. Starting to come on through. So if you are Korkat, you're going to have to spin around. You have to pay attention to it. 
That's a big win for Chong to try and find. He's been indomitable in this map, hasn't he? 23 and 16. Coming in from Chunk. It was momentarily looking like a potential white may come through, but Klausi needs to survive, but he's given his position up. Charles going to come on through one end. Is he going to find the second? Not quite. Denzer is there to find one. Knows where the pressure's coming from here. Pricey, it's looking good. For the side of Cold Cat. I say that. K2, find a couple of kills. Trent just holding down blue, making sure nobody sneaks through. Nobody stops that clock yet as the rest of his team are getting in position. They are priming the pump. They are looking to start this blender. And there's the first one. There's two down already. K2 Esports in a bit of trouble. They've got to play around. It's going to be Klausi all the way through spawn. And they will have called this one out as well. But Chunk is ready for anybody through left window. We can see on the minimap they're going through mid. Klausi will find Maestro as well as he's done that flank all the way through. And they've got back on the way. Chunk was in a good position. Gets taken down as well. So all of a sudden you do have to be careful if your core cat comes. Just trying to survive. Shot's not going to quite be there though. klausi has got himself in a position to maybe farm some players off. On the respawn. Oh, he could have done with those bullets hitting. All of a sudden, Klausi. Oh, he's just not finishing. He's dinner. Chunk is there to find him. Going to fight here for a little bit of control over towards it. This is still doable for K2 Esports to put a lot of pressure on the map. But that's a huge win from Chunk again. How many times have we said that in this game? Far too many. If you're a K2 fan, that's the difference. Korkat just looking to end this. 10 seconds to go. K2 Esports need an opportunity they need to get back onto this and hold it here isaac stopping the clock throws a nade has to back off as well the rest of his team now flying into this point they want be taken to give them that time and they find the kill on the ward denzo and maestro coming through looking to wipe them out of existence even drills has to come back from the spawn for this one finds it stops it with 1.5 seconds left to go and this for core cat is everything do they stop b here Trophy's down. The utility's starting to fly in through. Everyone's very, very weak. Chunk gets taken down, but what he is there to find one gets himself into the point, but B is secured. So they are going to give themselves just a second. Drills finds a couple of kills. Ten lives apiece. This is doable. For well, now, you can see opportunity has risen in its ugly head for K2 Esports, but they must convert. Three lives bad, but 45 seconds on the clock means they could be irrelevant. They just have to win some trades. There's the start. Kazi can find a gunfight or even a gap here. Two for two is not too bad, but you need it to look a little bit better if you're K2 Esports. Kazi right now, for all he has the map position and isn't doing anything to help his team out. They're struggling to get out and he needs to find himself in a position to do something with this price. He's currently not doing anything. Needs to find the gunfight win. It's so much time wasted and looking good for Korkat. The drills. He's down low and deep. But they have to get on to this point. They have to stop the clock. This is not about the trades now with three left remaining and six seconds and two left remaining. Drills has to have a miracle last alive. Down they fall. And Core Cats will win the control 3-1. The series 3-0. And they have the glass slipper. They will go to the playoffs, Tom. Lovely, lovely performance from Core Cat. Just better in every single mode. No question of it. Control get a little bit dicey at times, but comfortable enough. You'll be happy with that victory if you're Denzer and Cole. Cole Cat will go through now to play off secure that top four. And, and look, a really, really good performance from them. They'd be more than happy with that. We'll keep an eye on how they do in the playoffs. But I think if anything, with the way that Cole Cat played there and with the roster that they had, they'd be disappointed that it's taken this long to maybe solidify it in the fifth and final game. But I'm sure they'll be happy either way. Yeah, they certainly will. Of course, with the ending of one game, another game is already on the way. Let's look at how the hard point is going with Omit versus Clutch Rain. Of course, that is the fight for the top spot in this group between these two monsters. And it is close, Tom. Yeah, this one looks like it'll be a lot closer than the previous game, right? <laughs> We're loading in in a very, very close game between these two. A close sub, point, uh, sub base. We absolutely love to see it. Let's see how this one will go down. Whoever's picked these colors for the kill feed, and I put a thousand curses onto you. <laughs> With Clutch Rain <laughs> looking to get this done here. Can't actually get it up to this point here as both teams fighting for it. This may all come down to who gets the better rotation. Kills coming through from Twiz. Oh my word, can find the third as well. Stays himself alive, and then all of a sudden, this push over towards P1. They can't quite win it yet, so it's going to be about the rotation coming through as well. But if you're on it, you need to keep them off it. And right now, the kills are falling their way, so they find some sort of break. Three kills falling their way. The two rotations were looking very, very good until Twiz continued his spree. Five in a row now. Still the train in the better position. I mean, you are not here. They have not got 
this rotation locked in at all they have to make a big push Rafi will be looking to kill just a player just to stagger them a little bit as they go through there's the first gets away with his life as well and will play with this wall all day long they know they have the time Henry will take him down and now I'm going to you maybe just too far for them to get past Twizzy just holding them off as well five seconds left to go surely they can't dive this gotta be perfect two seconds gotta get in you're not there in time clutch rain map number one looks like it's been an absolute banger 250 to 224 very very close game i think Omi will be disappointed with that especially from what we've seen in terms of that p2 rotation that might be the first map that even Omi have lost and don't quote me on that but at least from what we've seen it's been three to zero three to zero three to zero just cruising clutch rain Finding map number one up against Omit in a very, very close map, Bryce. This series should be very, very good. Yeah, it really should. We knew this was going to be a big game for the both of them. Here are the statistics at the end of that one. We didn't get to watch an awful lot of it, but you can see Real 31 and 21 for the loss there in the end. Some big damage coming out of Henry. Yeah, managing to find a, a lot there, Henry. I mean, look, I, it's everybody sharing the load on the side of Clutch Rain. This lane battle is just not one. I, I mean, look, it's hard for us to point to any specific reason why it's one one direction. Real had a cracking game number one there. 24 non-traded kills. Trying his best, but his best wasn't quite good enough for the team. Really, really good job, though, from Clutch Rain. And that's a massive map to take away. Sub base goes their way. And now we have a series on our hands between these two. And it's only just started as well. We may well have another four maps here, Bryce. Both these two teams sitting at four and all in the standings. This determines that number one seed for the playoffs. So it is still an important game. It can make all the difference when you do head into maybe the latter rounds. When you start playing that first round, it's an easier game in that sense. You just want to be as high seeded as you possibly can be. And right now, both these two teams will want to win this map number two coming up very, very shortly. It certainly is. Well, that...
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Call of Duty Challenges Elite here in Europe. My name is Bryce, joining me, of course, Chris Tun. We've already had a game for you, we've already had a map for you. We're jumping into the S&D, Clutch Rain versus Omit EU. And Tun, uh, you were saying actually about this is uh, kind of unprecedented. You think Omit EU have had a very easy time so far in the Elite, but so far not so good against Clutch Rain. Yeah, not necessarily ideal. What is ideal though is we change the color on the code caster because this would be very difficult. But yeah, I know for Omi, every single time I watch them, the hard points look very, very good. And so is their search to destroy Vortex. The fact that he gets out there is insane. Finds one, dips. The smoke working out for him. So it was a big hit over towards B. We've seen this quite a lot in these first opening rounds, right? You don't have all the trophy system, so they can't help you lock this down. Utility has to be good for the attacking team. Same for Omi. Coming in for Mythics. Will back them down. Rafi will fall as well, so it's a good start to the search and strike from Omit. But you can see what the plan was from Clutch Rain. And they still execute. Yeah, trying to throw the needle, but has taken some damage and then that nade doesn't matter. Mythics gets the points and now Cobra looking for the first. Vortex will fall, but too many trades, too many bodies. How many of you get that first round on the board, Ton? Yeah, really, really good job coming in from Omit. Just a really solid defense. The fact that Vortex finds that first kill and gets out really does make a difference. You know, if Clutch Rain can trade that, then all of a sudden. You're in a different spot. But yeah, the B hit comes through for Omi Technical. You know, you would say that you were on the lower end of things when you got defense first. You don't have those trophy systems to protect you when you are trying to lock down a site. So the fact that they are able to find the round is a massive bonus. But yeah, just running through the results here, I'm pretty sure Omi hadn't lost the map until that stage. No, they beat two, three to zero, beat Kolkat three to zero. Oh no, okay, they lost the map to a revive game. And so I'm talking rubbish. There we go. So they have lost maps already. <laughs> Well, hey, sometimes dreams are better than facts, but it doesn't matter. You can see both these two teams just trying to get this first blood down. Positioning for Omen is going to be crucial here. They've burned a little bit of time crawling up, but Twiz is far forward. There's the first blood. Oh, no trades either. Gets out pretty quickly. Really good positioning from Twiz, actually. A little bit awkward. Just to find that angle over towards Todd Blue, but now he is in a lot of trouble. That near down. Oh, my word. How has it got into this position? It will get taken down by Real. This is great. A little bit of presence over towards this A site. Now for Omit. Push through DVD is going to be massive, though. Real's going to try and half lock this down. Does have Vortex in tow as well, but not quite comfortable enough to plant this yet, but looking like he's going to go for it eventually. They've been waiting patiently for Clutch Rain to make a move. They haven't seen them so far. They want to bomb down. Rafi goes for a wild chow. Mythics will get him. Has to get away with his life. And they will have to hunt him down. He's coming straight down to it. Henry is waiting. A little big gunfight. Cobra cannot find everything. A one versus two now for Henry. Timing is everything. Oh, my. And he has found an absolute blessing. 1v1. Looking for a little bit of a pop and shoot! Vortex just holds the irons long enough to get him. Doesn't reach out, doesn't slide out. And I'm you, 2-0 to the good. You actually could not ride it. It's like ships in the night. Gets run behind with a push through dark and then all of a sudden he gets a little bit unfortunate with the timing on the gunfight. Big round for Omit to find, though. That's attack and defense underneath your belt. It's a really good job, actually, I want to say. I think it was from um, from Real to find the pickup and then get that bomb down. You put yourself in that better position. But for Mythics to find that one kill on the flank as well. Custer Rain were waiting for that bomb to go down before they made their move. So the trap was set, but weren't able to execute. Vortex now through the middle of the map. MCW in hand. Looking to try and find a little bit of DVD. Control shots from Real are solid. We'll get in, we'll get out. And the kill to them in and advantage for Omit you and round number three. Look at this real <laughs> just furiously getting back as far as possible. Twist already taking a bit of damage. And for clutch rain. They now have to try and figure this out. Which way to go, where to apply pressure. It's looking like the move has been called to try and put pressure on to A. Real holding it down. It's a hard push to try and find if you're attacking but he isn't able to find anything but as them both up but can't quite finish his dinner. Two very, very weak players on the tank though. Nades have got to be coming in. The pressure's got to be coming in. They've got out as well. How have they got away with this? The Mythics oh. is going to get caught as well. How have Clotrain managed to pull this one back? Wee Man's been sinned as well by Rafi. Right now, Omit do not have control. Anyway, Wee Man goes for it. Rafi just caught between two players. 
Bunny Man will find that kill, but Bomb is now going down. Twist has got it back to a two versus two. This round has been chaotic from both sides. Oh, he's going to push out. He's going to push out straight into him as well, but Vortex isn't expecting it. I wasn't either. Wee Man now left in a really, really awkward spot. A player in front, a player behind. Twist is going to put the shots in. Wee Man should be dead to rights. Really good round coming in from Kutrain. A couple of gunfights here and there that were really down to the wire. They managed to find them. They managed to find the round. Get themselves on the board here in the search and destroy. Yeah, just felt like that one push. The call made by Clutch Rain. Let's get tank. Let's get control. The double stack real probably upset because obviously he didn't know that there were two there for the trade, and it all fell apart for him at EU. There, Mythics tried to help out, wasn't able to get the kill either, and then ended up falling in a trade before they could do any more. But Clutch Rain pulled that one out of nowhere. It wasn't a round that was ever looking like it, was it? Even in the 2v2, that pressure that came through once that bomb was down. Pressure being put on here on the defensive side as well. Stacking towards Hotel. Real's going to run into some trouble here in just a second. Well, apparently the trouble is just decimated. Nade bouncing off there for Twist. Isn't able to find the second 3v3. Got to read that. We man trying to get this trade back. Has got one. The clutch a little bit too far though, Tan. Just no positioning, no time. Clutch rain. Bringing this back to a two versus two. It's a really, really good snap coming on through. Originally, I think it was actually from Real. But Twiz was there to find one. Dip out. Aggressive defensive strat coming on through. And we do often see, you see this for some teams, you know, when those trophies aren't available one certain team will maybe just do a little bit better without that but when as soon as they start to come in as soon as you start to see these specialists evoked onto the other team things can change very very quickly clutch rain upon two rounds in a row now can they find a third keep an eye here as well for twiz all spree for him two more would give him a cruise missile and on this map in particular a wonderful thing to have looking like the b push is going to start coming on through the smoke is down the mythics if he can just find twist here and nothing else that will be huge this is all balanced on mythics horrible position to be in have to find this because the opportunity isn't going to be huge does get the first they don't push him either just plays the tank as much as he can trying to thread the needle bombs going forward he needs a little bit of a backup and vortex comes in with a nade over the top that's what they wanted This is scared through dark. I don't think we might would have expected that. Real is going to find the gunfight as well. Nicely done. All of a sudden, Cobra left in one versus three. He's a very good player. With some big accolades to his name last season specifically. Well, there's the first one under Vortex. It's a big gunfight win. Trying to stay alive now if you're Cobra. A potential one versus three, but time is just not on his side. No, has to basically run down straight to get this bomb straight away and already been tagged out. That'll be called as well to Real. We'll be looking to close down any alleyway and get through, more specifically dark. And he goes for this one and won't get it. Just time against him there. Couldn't take the opportunity to pull that map the way he wanted to. Yeah, I, I think honestly, uh, Mythics just does a really good job over towards this B side. It just makes it very, very difficult to really lock anything down for the attacking side. He just stays alive, dips and dives. And I think if if Kutrain had known that he was the only one there, they would have probably pressed it a little bit quicker. Not expecting him behind the tank, just checking either side, took his time, struck at the right moment. Really, really good job from Mythics. He's the one that locks that down. Kurba will find the first gunfight, though. Vortex is dead before the round has barely even started. So a 4v3 for Kutrain to try and tie things up. That's for again. Did a lot of work here, actually, in round one. All this really does keeps this street under control. We man is still a player. Unfortunately, the trophy system does. is on their side. Man, this is a nightmare shot from him. He's going to have to back away. He might be dead. Reach out, he might be, but I think we're going to kill on the other side of the map here, and he means uh, to dive into dark. And now that he's kind of split the map here, information will start to be called out. Let's try and work on A. Especially if he gets shots into Cobra, he'll be telling them that he is definitely one shot. Rafi, though. Repositioned over towards Back Palace. Cobra has stayed alive. Shots from Mythics are good, but he's just so hard to get rid of on that back truck. Bomb does go down at eight. 
Oh, this is three defense for Omid. If we can find a rail, we'll find one. Can he find a second? Not quite. Henry will answer back. Mythics is not there for the trade. Cobra comes through. Nice retake from Kutrain. To kill the kick off the round, that helps things out. 3-3 three, three now. Back and forth we go. Very, very difficult to separate these teams in the search and destroy. Wow. Just patience there from Cobra. I've got to say, staying alive for that long, it cuts off so much for Oma EU to push. They can never get it done. And this one could very well go to the wire. The hard point was close. The S&D is tied up. And I guess this is why these two teams are top of the group. Yeah, no surprise really, is it? Very, very solid squads. Omit really have probably had a little bit more success over the small part of this opening season, of course. But Omit on the back foot themselves. Kutrain have looked really good so far in this series. Right now, Clutch Rain are making an effort towards A, but they've got to check the corners. They've got to check tank. They've got to see whether or not they can push this out as much as they want to. It comes a check onto it as well. Wee Man is going to call this out. He's going to see these players down the street. That smoke is going to block him off, though. No way to stop it. Nades flying out for them. It's a few hit markers, but nothing more. The only thing they've got his information. Vortex will drop one onto Henry's head, but they've got control of tank. Mythics fly through as Rafi finds the second. We must not quite find the angle on the Cobra, who's now flying away. That bomb may well be going down now. The child that came through there. Honestly, you would have expected a Mythic to be able to find the trade. Good shots coming through from both players. Cobra's going to be back down, but this bomb may well be going down now. A little bit of info. We man will be found. This is looking like an attack and round from Clutch Rent. Throwing bullets. Might as well be into the sky. They are not giving him time of day. They are not giving him any more than a few pixels. He's only got seven bullets left. Yeah. And uh, there we go. Find out <laughs> Rafi. Now, just the Renetti in a tree. <laughs> He's never going to get anywhere, unfortunately. Omit could not find anything on the board there. Clutch Rain will take the lead. Importantly as well. I think that's the first time they've been in the lead. 2-0 down. Brought it back. 4-3 up now. Really good round coming through as well. I mean, it comes from those opening kills, right? Like that Rafi's able to find the second does make the difference because all of a sudden if you have that tank control coming through from I think it was Mythics you're in a different spot right you can lock down that tank just that little bit easier clutch rain find the clutch kills and now the attacking run for Orman what's the plan going to be Mythics trying to get it go oh, go for it <laughs> The trade doesn't expect two players to be there. And now first blood for Clutch Rain. How many of you lost a lot of map control? Their only real option is to hit this down B Street. Rafi trying to stay alive. He's going to fall to Real. Quiz. It's all easy. Finds Vortex. Get out as well. Weeman watching over there was the side. If Weeman can find this kill, it'll be huge for all mid. Henry then comes to the rescue, though. And all of a sudden, Real's left now in a one versus three. Expecting the pressure, smoke down, gets out as well. So what is the info here for Clutch Rain? Not a lot, but not a lot for Real either. I think he's going to go all the way around. He's going to try and make his way back towards eight. It's only got 30 seconds though. This is all going to be on Henry. Henry will see him if he makes this cross. There we go. There's the kill. Henry just waiting. Had the information for it as well. Clutch Rain, map point. This scores two to zero up, Ricey huge huge map in the grand scheme of things omit kind of coming in as the favorites on this side of the group stage cut train of course would have always been second but if cut train can find this win in the group stage as well puts them in a fantastic spot pressure's now on cut train have the attack you can already see a little bit of split cobra just going to watch the street here the rest of the team just on overwatch first blood could be the decision maker slow and steady and one of these teams wanting to make too much of a misstep 
Omid still need three rounds in a row here without bleeding one. So it's a total order. It's a defensive round to start things off would be very, very nice. It takes holding down over towards B. He's been quite successful at doing so. If the train have found any success on these attacking rounds, it's only been over towards the A side. Vortex. Just waiting. Somebody will check this. Somebody will stun it or somebody will slide cancel it. He's hoping to pick off one and get out. He's got a teammate watching over tank for him as well. So all of Omit just sitting in pre-aim. Waiting for the push. Rafi finds the shots. And then they're nade on the Mythics. Now Real has to kick in the gear, but this could be free. Oh, the shots are shaky, and he gets turned on. Henry to find the kill. Finds another one at the Wii Man as well. It's left to Vortex. One versus four. Not going to happen. Clutch Rain, two to the good. And all that time burn comes clutch for Clutch Rain. He thought maybe when Vortex threw those stun grenades out, we would slow them down just enough, but they kept losing bodies. Real, when he dived through, was hoping to find more than one. Found nothing. And it all fell apart from there. I, I, honestly, Real has to do better. 100%. He had a good map number one coming on through. Maybe it gets a little bit unfortunate with the timer, but at least from our co-caster view, it looks as if you should at least find a kill there. If he finds one, all of a sudden, he's maybe snapping onto a second or a third. The help was there. That could have been the round. Who knows what would have happened in any future ones, but immediately we find Clutch Rain 2-0 up in this series. 6-3, search and destroy. Just, I, honestly, I want to actually point out the huge moment that really happened from Rafi in one of the previous rounds. When he finds that two-piece on tank to find that round, that's what puts them in this position to be 5-3 to three up. And have got so many times that they could potentially make mistakes, but they didn't make any. First time of asking on map point, they get it done. 6-3. And a really good comeback because Omit were 2-0 up at one stage. So that's a big switch around from Clutch Rain. 6-1 on the remaining rounds after the first two. Well, here are the highlights from that S and D. And they kept going back and forth, but Clutch Rain just finding it out in the end. And unrelenting pressure. I've got to say, some of the highlights for me, obviously, Cobra holding down streets continuously, taking Omit EU probably out of their comfort zone. And some of these trades, it could have been different for Omit EU, but Clutch Rain committing more bodies towards it. And just getting that kind of that bait and switch played out for them several times, Tom. It did. Like, it was these opening moments in and around on the attack, really, uh, around tank or around, around dark. They really didn't make it work. For Omit EU now, finding yourself position search and destroy really i mean clutch just looks a lot more comfortable in certain situations they'll be disappointed to be two to zero down here Omit. i don't think they ever would have expected this i know clutch are a good team but i think Omit would have thought to themselves they would have it in their locker to be able to deal with them at least on one of these first two maps and now they're heading into a control that they have to win not a good spot to be in whatsoever master a bit of a surprise and they were the favorites ton 100%. And this could all come down to control. You gotta say, many of you have had their opportunities. That hard point was close. They were ahead in the SD. But as we move forward in this series, we're all gonna see how it's all played out so far. Of course, 250 to 224 was the sub base hard point. Come down to the P2 in the end. That invasion set and destroy. I said it before, but Omni, you were up 2 to 0 in this, and it all fell apart in the end. Karachi Control is gonna be up next. If I mean, you can find that map, Skid Row Hardpoint after that. And if somehow we get into the final flurries of this, Terminal Search and Destroy could be the ending map time. We've seen both teams on Skid Row Hardpoint if we do get there. So we know that Omen are a pretty solid team on that map. It's going to be all about rotation. But it is if we do get there. Karachi Control is probably my favorite control map on this game. It's always an entertaining one. So let's see which way it goes. Let's see who's the best team in this side of the group stage at this stage. And in Europe, I honestly, I really expected a bit more from Omit. Close map number one, not great map number two. Can they come back in map number three? That's it, Roman. I'm sure there's been an incredible team talk currently going on. They know what's at stake. Nobody likes to lose, even if, of course, they've already qualified for the playoffs. That's all locked in at the moment. We can see that uh, they will be trying to get back into this one as well. But the control is going to be our next map for this one. That will be up just after this short break. Don't go anywhere. We'll catch you right after this.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Call of Duty Challengers Elite. This is Omid EU versus Clutch Rain. Right now, Clutch Rain upsetting the Titans of Omid EU. They are 2 0 to the good as we head into the control. Defense for Clutch Rain to kick things off, Tom. Look, I, I mean, I, I want to preface like how important this game is for seed one, right? Look, you, you come into this game, you want to be in that top four, of course. You already got that secured. Making sure you lock in that first seed can really help you out. And Omid EU will not be wanting that to get away from them. They have kind of been there as the favorite in this group the entire season. They found themselves a good push over towards the B side of things. All ready to kick things off. Twiz will find a kill on the Real. And this should be a retake coming on through. Mythics, Vortex can combine. Damage already done over towards the B side. Not quite. You don't find that tick. Two ticks over towards A though. Once that pressure was coming in. So we'll make you not a bad start here, Bryce. Well, you can see both of them just flying through to this and trying to get this one down Henry and Twiz will get some points onto it but that point has already been secured but I mean to you it's about keeping this pressure up now as this is very much a different point in time than getting on the way can they find the route through this red control is just so paramount for the defensive side big win from Cobra pressure is going to be there so we will back on down to Dinah we'll have somebody on the cross over towards top red too so not too bad of a spot here for Kutrae on the defensive side of things. Vortex will get rid of Rafi though, but look at this control in red from Kutrae. Still got it. Henry just waiting. Psychedelic camo. Prized and poised. Looking for it. Doesn't oh. even get the kill on the trades go against them here. They're staying alive. Twist flies to this point looking for the players he knows have got to be in this area. The clutch rain. A little bit of sweat on the brow, but Twist still holding it down. And you can already see how many of you. They've committed to a long flank here from Vortex. Vortex is going to do the damage. Oh, he can't find anything. One player in the corner. May well just signal the end of that attack, but still some red control. Rafi, if he'd found that kill, it would have been really bad for Omit. And now find themselves in the position where they can go again. 10 and 10. 13 lives remaining. That's not going to help, though. Lose a couple more. Make it three more. That doesn't go too badly, though, for Clutch Rain, even though the team kill comes through. Rain has now found a potential flank, though. So they're going to try and wait for the players to come through. You can see already they're waiting for the pressure to come through over towards Red. They want Real to be the tip of the spear here. Can he find a way through? And Real has an opportunity. Kills going no, down the other side. This. Finds one. We'll dive in at this point to stop the clock with 43 seconds left to go. Mythic's backing him up, but Real's going to go down. They didn't get in this point, but alone has to make a key gunfight here. Nate flying like water cobra, staying alive and gets the kill. And that'll be the end of that push for now. Nobody left for Omi EU near that point. They will have to start again with 33 seconds to go and very few That's lives big. remaining. No respawns. Yeah, you find that first kill. 3v12. Yeah, we have seen it. We have seen it. But look at the positioning from Coach Rain. There's just no way through this defense. Rafi finding one, can't quite find the second on the Vortex. Twiz is there to pick it up, but honestly, for Clutch Rain there, Cobra went so big, finds 10 kills in the round. Massive defensive hold coming through from Clutch Rain. Find themselves in the lead again, and relatively comfortable. Fix-wise, I, I mean, you don't want to think on it too much. Attacking rounds are not the hardest to come by on Karachi, at least for these very, very solid teams. It might find it very difficult on ranked. I'm not going to lie, but you do see it happen quite often. Ticks did come on through. I want to say it was at least four, I want to say, for the side of all mid there. So bear that in mind, but a really good defensive round coming through from Clutch Rain. Three sprees for Cobra and Twiz. Can they get something going here on the attack as well? Cruise missiles, never bad to have. Let's see how this one goes now. Henry and Co are going to find themselves on the attack. 2-0 lead here in this series. A 2-0 lead in the control. We'll put them in a really good spot. Well, you can see, just trying to get the positioning correct. Cobra, I don't even make the jump I think he wanted to make. Eventually, we'll get up into top three. Looking for Real, we'll get it. Not enough kills going down. Actually, I tell a lie, every kill going down. Clutch Rain have got this. Cobra on a five streak. And this means, I mean, you will now have to completely commit to B. No more opportunities for them as well. Cobra still on the streak here now, Real. Gonna just have to wait. Just wait. Nothing else to do. Vortex trying to get him out alive. Isn't gonna happen either. And Cobra will keep moving forward. All the kills just flowing wow. to Clutch Rain. Clutch Rain are absolutely running through your mid here. And one will know that there is players around this dumpster. Cobra still, though, just doesn't care. That's seven in a row from him. He's basically locking down the map on his own. Shot's going to start coming in here from the dumpster side. There's one player towards the back as well that is going to deal with them. Rafi now left pretty much all on his own here. This is going to be difficult. Does well to find one. So for all that Omit, are behind on lives. I've lost A already. 
can set themselves up now. Set their stall out over towards B. Next wave of kills is B. Holding this, but so many bodies trying to flow through, but that step up is not easy. They get it. But will it be enough? Mythics already know. A player fight. coming from behind. Quiz jumping up and down and somehow wow. gets the kill. That's a nightmare for them. Rafi will find another one. No from it. They are in trouble. Real trying to hold it down. Will fall to Rafi as well. They are back on the point here, Tan, surely. All of a sudden, you found yourself through red. You're into Diner. Trophy down. Dangerous now for Omit once again. These next couple of kills are so important. Wee Man's able to find one back. Twist towards the backside, though. Doesn't have any health now. Pressure coming in from Clutch Rain over towards the spawn rather than just getting yourselves into Diner. I would have liked to see a bit more commitment just towards the objective. Now Henry in an awkward spot. Oh, if he could have found the second, that would have just opened things up completely. Second tick now coming on through. Clutray not on their way here, Bryce. They are, but he's just alone. Henry, can he get that second tick? That'll be the point. Does. Second deck in. They now try to get them in bodies as well. Twiz is trying to fly out. What? The what? Oh, what? Twiz gets the second one. There's too many bodies under this point. That's Clutch around. Rain have got this one locked. Loaded and 2 0 to the good. Twiz is an absolute monster. What on earth was that? I really hope that's the ending kill count. It isn't. <laughs> but my god, he absolutely shotguns one player. The, the other had to be weak. The Renetti comes out. And the Renetti deals with death once again. 2-0 in the series. 2-0 in the control. Get over towards defense if you clutch rain. Not only would a win over Omit be a big statement for them heading into playoffs. But a 3-0 one? Incredible. Wow. <laughs> this was unexpected. And to you, it is a long, long journey back into this series. They have to win their attack. They then have to win two more rounds and then two more maps. Is it a stretch too far? It would have to be the Giga Reverse Sweep. You don't see them very often, but they are a thing. Well, they're trying. A point so far going well for them. Obviously, Clutch Ray not really committing bodies to this anymore. They will try and get a few kills on the outside. Twist is here. Henry's there. Raffi's looking for top three, but they aren't putting the pressure on. It is a slow but inexorable climb for Clutch Rain to try and take the office. And sometimes, you know, when you two this up, you can maybe try and play a little bit passive on the defensive side of things, and that hasn't worked out. You lose a couple of kills, one in the middle of the map, one over towards red. You Clutch Rain, you need to find this next couple of kills, or the pressure could be coming in. Raffi. One onto Mythics. We'll slow them down. Vortex. And over towards B. Finds a route through. Shots going in. But the pressure coming in from the Dunster side. So still some presence here for a moment. The train here in numbers as well. Next couple of kills. Could be big for a little bit of map control. Real will find one. But Henry is there to help out. So looking like Dyna control is there from Clutch Rain once again. Oh, just playing his life. Tries to get another challenge. Not going to do it. Clutch Rain. Press. And they've gone for the fortress strategy where everybody gets into B and just holds it down at the moment. A little bit of a push out towards red, but Vortex is waiting by bus. The next flurry of kills prove everything. I'll we'll find the first. Henry spray will find Vortex as well, but could be in trouble. Twist is going to be here at the same time. This is when huge for the team on a couple of occasions needs to do it here again. The first bullets are in already from Real and Twist somehow still wins it. Shuts the door, not in just into Diner, but maybe on that attacking push. Now he's going to push forward. He's going to get caught out, though. Maybe a little bit overzealous for that. Three kills came through. You didn't find Vortex, and all of a sudden, the pressure is back on. Kills have been traded, fortunately, for Clutch Rain, and then make it one more. Mythics needs to find a pick here. It feels like Omit are a little one by one at the minute. And they will have to try and find a difference. They need to make these kills. They have to get the trades fully in their favor. Vortex moving forward. They've got a bit of control. They this have found the gap. Then Cobra trying to just cut down the reinforcements. Henry and Cobra combined is now a two versus two. Henry throwing nades straight onto Wee Man. Wee Man is going to be that. weak and laying down. He's going to try and be chowed here. Twist doesn't know where he is either. It's two players flying through. Wee Man cannot get them. It's speed that kills here as Rial flies back into the point, and that is going to be Huge. three down. Huge. One player left in and around this point. It's going to be Henry. He's going to be dealt with. That's a big stack coming on through. One tick's already in. A Real secures the kill towards the backside. It's just impossible for Clutch Rain. It's such a hard gunfight to try and win. B will be locked in. And there is some life in Omit yet. Two to one. Find an attacking round. 
And it just felt like it was one by one by one. But at the same time, it just felt like both sides were staggered. They never had any more than one or two in and around Diner. And for the defensive side, that's the worst thing possible. Honestly, I, I really, I think it was Twiz when he found a couple of kills or at least one, I think it was the final one at Real at the back door, sprinted forward. You've got to expect that last player to be there to keep that pressure on. He was there. It was Vortex. He finds a couple more after that. Secures B. And now for him, over towards the defensive side, if they can lock this in. I'm not going to say it, but, they, you know, <laughs> the Giga Reverse Sweep is on, Brycey. It's potentially there. It really is. But still, Omit have to play this one so well to do it. Real is looking for this kill. Not going to be able to get anything more than the nade kill as well. That first tick will be through. The mistake they cannot make here is allowing a flawless transition to made of it. That's a big win from Rafi. He won the attack around pretty handily last time around. Twiz, there's no way he should find that gunfight. Keeps the pressure on over towards that B side, so you have to answer it if you're Omit. Pressure over towards A2, though. And Rafi, I, I mean, I, I'm curious. Does he jump onto B here? Does he just stay alive? Keep some presence over towards that side because Cobra's going to be here to help immediately. So he finds one in the middle of the map. If Rafi can find a kill here over towards the Diner side, this is huge oh. for Cut Train. Oh, just got the wall bang for the final kill coming through. Rafi's alone, though. Will have to back off as he goes for the gunfight. This is a huge chow. Goes for the first. Gets out of this one at the same time. He is holding off. Home it by himself. Eventually will fall. The damage might be done. They have lost some map control. They have them. Find themselves five lives behind here, too. And for Omit, on that last defensive round, you never really found anybody over towards that red side. And that's what hurt Real. You had to be weak, Cobra. Surely you did. Rafi can find a couple of kills, though. And then all of a sudden, Omit are starting to spawn out. Next wave is massive. You've got to go if you're Omit. Oh, we're taking a couple of seconds to kill there, but it's flying oh, in. This Get is huge. the second. We man will find one back. That second tick is on its way. We man's going to fall as well. Mythics to try and hold it down. The second tick should be in here for Clutch Brain. But reinforcement from both sides. Twiz just guns Mythics down. And that might be enough. On to the third tick here for Clutch Rain. Rafi and Henry, you found a couple of kills. All of a sudden, it's all on Real. He gets gunned out of his socks. They're in. It's going to be over. That tick is done. It is dusted. Clutch Rain 3 0 to the good. Wow. How many you fall? In a surprising upset here in the Elite. That means they will be the number one seed of their group. What a game. I, I actually can't believe that. It's an incredible result for Clutch Rain. The team that are the consensus number one in Europe in Ormond have just been 3-0'd. It, it just yeah. makes no sense. Look, I, I mean, we, we didn't necessarily put Clutch Rain out of the equation for winning this series whatsoever. But for it to be a 3-0 in that fashion, map number one relatively close. Search and destroy, comfortable. Map number three, comfortable. That is a big, big statement win coming in from the side of Clutch Rain. Cobra and Twiz were going crazy the entire series. And it feels like Omit maybe have a little bit of work to do on the control. It never felt like they had control over towards that B side. They never really had some good presence in over towards red and top apartments and things can be a struggle from there it felt a bit one by one on attack on occasion as well not at the races today look they are very much a team who will come very very strong in playoffs but that is not the way they would have wanted to end the group stages not whatsoever and, uh, that highlight there from twiz kind of summed up everything i thought about him during the series just huge plays when they needed him and I'm going to use, while they fought back and got their attacking round, it was not to be any more. They just could not keep a lid onto them. And as long as the kills flowed, Cobra as well, doing everything he could. But yeah, you are right. Nobody expected a 3-0 in this direction at all. Clutch Rain just put things on their head. A great opportunity from them as they go number one seed in Group B into the playoffs. And that just gives them a, such an easier start. Look, I know they'll probably want to not jump into Ormit straight away, but it just helps you out so much in terms of what your bracket looks like. We'll have to have that confirmed, obviously, which we won't do just in this show, I would say. I think we may well have that for the NA side of things. I mean, I, <laughs> I know production are now sitting there like, oh, now we've got to build a bracket. Thanks, Ton. But no, realistically, look, we will have a bracket very, very shortly once all the games are finished. To try and have a look at it, we'll at least be on socials. That will set us all up for how things are going to start to break down tomorrow when we head into playoffs. But yeah, I'm going to reiterate what we're saying here. That is a huge result for Cut Train, and especially a 3-0. Massive, massive moment in the grand scheme of things here for Call of Duty Challenges Elite in Europe. Yeah, it has. And well, the hard point was close. The S&D, it was omit for a little bit, but then Clutch Train yeah. kind of proved their worth into it as well. And 
got to be honest realistically the uh the control always looked like clutch rain with a better team on it as well and just in case you need more information on everything that we have seen and everything that is coming down the pipeline remember to go on to faceit.com for more tournament info on challenges elite the bracket the groups how everything has gone down statistic everything you could possibly want done Oh, yes, I mean, all the results are on there as well, so you can see how things are broken down. But hey, look, there you go. Group stages are done. The surprising twist towards the end. We've got our top eight teams for the most part. Should be very interesting to kick things off tomorrow. It really should, of course. The bracket will be starting and we'll be jumping in, of course. 2.45 for you American viewers. Well, that's the time it's coming. Of course, there's not everything done for the day. It is done in Europe. The bracket is set for us. But if you want more Call of Duty Challenge Elite action, you can wait a few hours for our North American colleagues to jump in. Of course, at 6.30 p.m. ET, you will have Diverse versus Scrap. And at 7 p.m. ET, you have Omit. I'm guessing... Uh, where's omit versus law and omit bk <laughs> will be that one jumping in so kind of similar to how it has been in europe but our groups are done in europe north america is next that's all you really need to know stay around on this channel if you want more trans elite action but i've been bryce tom's been joining me we've had a great time and we will see you tomorrow
What's up, COD fans? We're back at it after the long delay. We are ready to go with North America. Obviously, Battle.net was suffering for this moment there, so it may have delayed us just a touch. <laughs> Unbelievable. But, hey, it's shift. It's study. And we have one more match of round-robin action in these group phase before we get to double elimination playoffs. And all of our matches are essentially tiebreaker influence matches we have today, Jay. It's going to have some big games, man. We got a lot of teams sitting at 2-2. Two and two. We know that you only play a total of five matches. So you want to get to that 3-2 and two record, get that top four, make it to the playoffs that start tomorrow. It's, a, it's basically do or die for a lot of these players today. Absolutely the case. And what we've kind of said since day number one is you get to three wins, you're probably going to be pretty comfortable unless there's some weird like multi three and one or three and two tiebreaker situation. But the chances of that happening are not all that high. So you look over group A, Space Fish Taco, Lord Gaming should be safe. Face Black will be playing up against Space Fish Taco trying to confirm their spot. Whereas SGP and the Syndicate Boys will be playing up against Bowser's Kingdom. So that group is starting to iron itself out. Amit Brooklyn have a lot of work to do if they want to find their way at the uh, playoffs for their group side. But we're going to be mostly focused on what's going on over in Group B today, as Boston's already good to go. They've looked great this split, by the way. And then you've got a couple of tiebreaker scenarios that come into play here, because Diverse will play up against SKRP, and Houston plays up against Convoy. So okay. there is a chance for either a one-way tiebreaker or a multi-team tiebreaker at 2-3, and three, depending on our results. Oh, that's scary, too, man, because, like, you got to keep in mind, SKRP, they started off 0-3. They got the their first dub last week all the way at the very end in their match four and that was I'm pretty sure against NYSL Academy they came out swinging and they still actually have an opportunity if Houston Spartan lose if they be diverse they all be sitting at two and three so it all comes down to map count after that yeah, it's going to be a really interesting one. So here is a breakdown of what we have in the schedule for us. And again, our main focus will be what's going on with Diverse versus SKRP. We will delay the Amit versus Laura game to make sure we catch at least the majority of it. But I think the biggest thing about it is, hey, we haven't really had much of a chance to see uh, SKRP at all, actually, no. I think, on broadcast at this point. So it'll be our first look at them. We did, like you kind of already alluded towards, have a small look at Diverse. And yeah, it's just been kind of a weird split for both these two teams based on the results that we've kind of looked at over the last two days. And the crazy thing is... Is, like we already got the maps and I think diverse have set themselves up for the series versus SKRP great because you already see it in the highlights this map Rio it's going to be our map number one in the series that's when you get those players like Neom like 04 really Paul X and Mr. Do It All to get them nice and early activated into this series but you gotta keep in mind man let's do it die you gotta make sure you come out swinging right off the rip you can't get caught lacking today yeah, absolutely the case. And, you know, again, like you mentioned, this diverse team was not a squad that going into this split, we were looking at saying, oh, like this could be a, a major threat for the yeah. group, let alone for playoffs. But, hey, you know, the no-name players, so to speak, or the new-name players is probably the more way, appropriate way of saying it. They've really popped off. And I don't know about you, Jay, but it was just really funny looking at this roster because – you assume a player like Paul X is going to put himself with another veteran roster yeah. full of or old CDL pros or people that have been at the top of challengers. That hasn't been the case. Paul finds himself with essentially three newcomers here, and honestly, the three newcomers have maybe played better than Paul. Oh, yeah. Those guys are disgusting, man. Neom comes into my chat every single morning because he knows I'm a morning rank play guy, and he loves to just torture my SR right at the beginning of the day. He told me yesterday, oh, I'm going to take the morning golf. You can get your SR back. So he's a very cocky young man, and I like <laughs> it. You know, the way that he plays with that SR the way he's able to slide around, he makes stuff happen on the game that you probably don't expect a lot of people to do. And in the yacht side, you got 04, who's like Mr. S and D. He's been playing Search of the for a couple years. He's always going to put up dub digits. These new guys really are showing out so far in this elite. On the other side of things for SKRP, their name is influenced by the, the names on the roster, so that's how that all works out. And again, kind of looking at this team overall, there are some interesting players in the mix. Phantoms in particular is the big known name. He was a substitute back on the Vegas, or pardon me, the Paris Legion yeah. during the Modern Warfare year, and I always thought he should have had a shot. He, I thought he played that game very, very well. Never got a chance to really start for the team at all, but he finds himself with Shoxy, Ruper, and, uh, and, and, and MV. I will say Ruper had a good year last year he was playing with Snoopy before Snoopy got picked up to the Boston Academy and at the same rate Shoxy was also kind of in the middle of the pack with North America so uh, you know I think this is an interesting squad and see what their potential will look like as we get our first look at them here today and like you kind of already mentioned we've got a double dose of Rio to start us off with the Karachi control as at least our third game yeah and that's all out mix fest that's all I see for the first three maps we're talking about Rio HP three submachine guns Rio SD three SMGs Karachi control at some points 
can also be three SMGs. And if we have it to go in that map four or map five, that's where the AR starts to really come alive. But I think it's all going to be about these early fights, these early engagements, getting the guns warm, making sure you're staying hot. Because if you can stay hot with those SMGs, you might walk away with a clean 3-0. Very well may be the case in... Yeah, I think the speed, tempo, that was one yeah. of the biggest things that we noticed about this diverse team. It wasn't just that the SMGs were looking really solid from their individual POVs. Collectively, they were doing a really nice oh, job yeah. at putting themselves into good, speedy rotations, really making life difficult for that Lagliners NYSL Academy team. So here is kind of what's on the line again. Just to kind of reiterate, only eight teams are going to make it into the double elimination playoff starting tomorrow. So you got to finish top four in your group and just looking at how the rankings are funneled out and what the matches are this would have to be a win for skrp oh, yeah. to force at least one tiebreaker if not a multi-team tiebreaker at two and three uh, regardless though you win it and you find yourself in a tiebreaker situation with diverse you hold the head-to-head -head. so there is a lot of weight here for skrp not having a great week this, this last week you come out win this game you put yourself in a good spot to possibly still find yourself in top four yeah you're sitting at one and three like i said you got your first win last week you still have an opportunity to make it to the playoffs. You just got to take care of business that's right in front of you and take down this team diverse. And you probably want to do it by a great map count as well because map, map count comes into play if there turns out to be a three-way tie. With Houston yeah, Spartans yeah. going up against Convoy, you better be shooting Donnie Temp a message saying, I just listened to your mixtape all morning. I'm ready to rock and roll, <laughs> and I need you to be there with me. I love that little dantata to get you going in the evening. Why yeah. not? Turn. On the on the other side, I was just kind of looking over it. I, I didn't say it with any certainty, but there actually is a world based on the matchups that they have in Group A that five teams could be three and two in Group A. Okay. Because SGP, they play Bowser's Kingdom. That should be a win. That gives mm -hmm. them their third. Space Fish Taco and FaZe Black play each other. If FaZe Black wins, that puts those two teams at 3-2. and two. And then Amit Brooklyn and Lord Gaming is our Bravo matchup. And depending on the result there, one of those teams could be 3-2. and two. So we could have a five-way tiebreaker, which I believe would be the first time in Challengers Elite that we've had that. But I think just more than anything else, this just goes to show that the competition North American Challengers Elite is really, really tight across the board this year. Yeah, it's really tight because a lot of these guys used to be pros. You know what I'm saying? Like, all <laughs> these guys are knocked down into Challengers. Now you have to build a whole new way of how you play the game. Learn different play styles. Learn to be more aggressive. Learn to adjust to new teammates who are now in Challengers on their way up. It's just all these guys have been having battles for such a long time against each other. Where it comes to Challengers, it comes to the pro scene. These guys are really familiar. So that's why we have that tough competition because these guys have been around for quite some time. Absolutely the case. New players looking to find some early favor in their careers. Others a little bit longer down the road, but still, I imagine, depending on the results here and what happens in Miami, that there very well may be opportunities for anyone, whether they are new or old in the scene, try to get themselves into the league or get back to the league. So, real hard point starting things off. And again, all I'm excited for is to see if we're going to get consistency out of the electric POVs that we had from the SMGs from Diverse. And at the same rate, let's learn something about SKRP and see what they have to offer here this season. Yeah, I'm excited to see what SKRP got to bring to me because Phantoms, I've known that guy for a really long time. Can't believe he's still playing cop, but obviously he's got some fight in him. And if he can walk away with this series, you still have a chance at playoffs. As they're the team early on, getting a lot of P1 control. They find all the right kills at the right time. They're currently holding down this P1. And the contest is going to be in. I don't know if that's a team kill. Yes, it is. Oh, my God. So many damn team kills. But it's so oh. mixy in P1. Oh, well, Ford actually almost takes himself out of the mix with the Semtex not getting around the door. And KB, okay. Nice shots from the prone position. That's the one player I will say on the side of SKRP that I have not seen before in Challengers, whether it's a name change or not. But it, I, he has been looking pretty solid based on the word around Twitter. So good moment there to lock in the scrap time. And now all of a sudden, SKRP are going to have a rotation around the back of P2 trying to move spawns. And yeah, they, they will be successful initially to push Diverse out. But both those kills coming quickly for 0-4 will reestablish control for Diverse. Yeah. That's good stuff from Diverse to find all those kills before that hill pops. Now you know exactly where they're all going to spawn all the way across the map. But we have to make up for this P2 time. You give up 40 at P1. That's not very successful. You don't want to do that. But if you can have a response here. So far, it's been a great hold. You have Pollux going on the pinch. He gets cut down. So now there's an opening for SKRP to push right through the front with the numbers. Looking decent. But the kills just are not there. Again, the lockdown comes through appropriately soon as it's needed and how 04 starts to really heat things up three in a row five and two start for him keep in mind that well no need to worry about things like cruise missiles because we're still 
Yeah. Dealing with trying to fix those up. So Rupert now on the front side break will do well. It neutralizes the hard point and there's a little bit of time here still to earn. It's not bad either. 13 seconds worth of scrap. Problem is, Neem comes from behind. That will find the kills and Diverse will get us to a tie game. Yeah, but if you ask Cappy, you'll take that. You die all the way across the map. So you guarantee yourself the spawns for the next. Now you just have to put yourself in a setup to hold it down for the first push. As Phantoms reads the first player on 04 coming down the mid steps. Now he knows that the pressure is going to be up towards the street. We got an AR in a back pocket. It's not going to be good enough. Diverse, too many bodies, too aggressive. They find the break. Oh, nice snaps again from KB. Semtex goes out. Will not land for any follow up damage nor a kill. Rupert along the side gets in for the contest. It's going to be challenged from every single angle, though. Actually does well to get some damage, but the follow-up is just <laughs> simply not there for SKRP. Paul, Neem, 4 all finding individual kills. Shoxy, the last one left, and he's had a little bit of a stinker to start, and it's not getting any better. Oh, boy. Well, maybe. He's able to find one. Nearly transfers for the second, but all things told, Diverse still controlling the hard point. Yeah, Diverse still holding on, and they read the player in Rupert, who was playing it nice and slow through the back end, trying to set up a pitch for his teammates. The Diverse laid off the rotation. They get the breakthrough street. That's been two back-to-back -back holds to blow this game wide open. And they find themselves in a situation over towards P4 at Garage. If they can sniff out this player in KB, who's pushed out, which Ryan does have an angle on it. He's one shot. We're going to commit towards the fight. That's another three dead. Last player on the point should get traded. And this is another break, another great yeah. rotation coming in at Diverse. And this is what I was talking about in our pre-match setup when it talks through Diverse getting aggressive and having really good tempo across the map. Look what we're getting here. I mean, you've got Zero Four just making life so difficult over towards gate side. And that will not just give you awareness on how many players are hitting, but where are they most importantly hitting from. Ryan, a little bit of trouble trying to play off the quick pinch. So now SKRP with numbers start to flood their way forward. Kills looking good. Paul, last one left alive off five. Gets the six, but does not predict the seven. And SKRP will have at least a small moment of getting into the hard point. Yeah, a small moment. But that's not enough to win you this damn game. You got to make sure you're trading efficiently, not allowing these SMGs to put you in a blender. And that's exactly what they're doing. Non-stop pressure throughout the entirety of the map. Neom, unfortunately, does get caught with his pants down. And SKRP now have an opportunity. They're going to be the team fully set up over towards B5. You want to control the smalls. You know exactly where they are coming from. Just got to withstand this first hold. Shoxy does well to create a little bit of space. Bottom side Eskies. Reaper just kind of playing his shoulder over towards the U-turn. Works out for the first couple of kills, but look how quickly Diverse are able to trade themselves right back into the mix. I mean, that's just almost a little bit too easy. That's a 2v4 yeah. situation mm -hmm. on the hard point. Unbelievable. Another great moment for Diverse and SKRP forced to have to break. Yeah, they're forced to have to break again. Now you're allowing players like on like L4 to put up the aggressive numbers right through the middle of the map. The rest of his teammates does fall, so now you have to slow it down. You're setting up for the break, but there's still only 25 seconds left. You're more focused on maintaining top mid control, but he's going to say, screw it. That guy's one shot. I'm going to go for the trade, and now I'm going to help my teammate do top bridge. Still 15 seconds here. Oh, clean shots. Four in a row for 04. Now off the reload. The slide through starts to come out. A little bit more information game with that little crossover at the top at bridge, but there's really only a couple of seconds here, so... Largely speaking, SKRP do a fine job, but the problem is they are getting slaughtered on this rotation back over to the first hill, and with that, Diverse will step in for early time. Yeah, Diverse is already in, and now they know exactly where SKRP are coming from. So everybody's playing a credit corner. You don't want to give up your life for free, but Ruper starting off with the first kill, and KB finding a second. They already found two, make it three. The break is instantly going to be in. That's great patience and teamwork out of SKRP right there. Just child one-on-ones, but also set up those team shots to execute that break and now get some much-needed time at this P1 again. Neom in for the contest. A little bit of assistance from Paul just behind him. The chase is on for these kills topside bridge. Really clean stuff from Neom. Now with the numbers, heading back towards the hard point. Just looking for Shoxy, who's eluded him to this point. Pistol is out, and wow, absolutely perfect shots coming from Neom. Even slides back into the hard point where there was Ryan Bandy waiting to help cover over the top. Scrap time would go away to verse, and now all of a sudden they're working on rotation as well. Yeah, they're working on rotation, but they do get cut down. So SKRP, read the overextensions, make sure no one's going to execute a deep pinch. So they're going to be the team in the initial time, and this is a response that they definitely need. You're currently down by 60 points. It needs to be a great answer. Paul X, good shoulder, unfortunately, does not win the gunfight. Phantoms find the second, but it's diverse through the back end. Still spawning across the map, so 04 has his hands full here. Yeah, that's KRP doing what they can to stay involved, but like you said, the finesse from 04 looking pretty solid. These individual challenges will eventually work out. May have been a moment of fatigue, though. I mean, trying to track down 04, but 
now all of a sudden you do have the setup ready to go. KB playing just behind the hot dog. And, well, you can see it underneath. There was the information game, but Neom on the pinch. Oh, oh my, my goodness, Neom on the pinch for three. He may have been able to get the fourth as well. Not required as 4 finds the kill, and the break is good for Diverse. He just always finds a way. He always finds a way. He maneuvers his way behind enemy lines, and he makes three count for his teammates to execute a break for a little bit, but they're more focused on setting up for the next. Just creating that layer, that layer was a great play out of Neom. Now it allows your teammates to get fully set up over towards the bottom of the Eskies. 30-point game. Diverse are currently in. But here comes SKRP. They're actually taking a couple long routes. It's going to yeah. be on KB to just play his life in this position while his teammates already pushed the back. Oh, he's not able to, though. And now the alarm bells start to ring as Phantoms finds the kill along the backside, repositioning from Diverse inside the hard point. They're able to find one, but they're still missing Rupert. They haven't been able to track him as of yet. Paul may have scouted him, though, on this cross through the window. And yeah, Neom's on the hunt. Problem is... Can't quite track down Rupert. So the finesse game, decent. Ryan eventually puts him to rest. The problem was in the entirety of that play from SKRP, they never had a full break on the hill. Yeah, they just couldn't get in. Rupert was trying to stay alive, but his teammates couldn't find any kills. So he was put in a position to finesse a little bit longer than he could. They find the break with about 20 seconds left, and they're still in this game. You can win a rotation gunfight over towards the next hill at P4. You can get a full 60 and potentially take the lead. But it's diverse here early on. Great shots from 04. They actually trade. That's insane. I hate when that happens, but it's an all-out mix fest over here towards the P4 side. Diverse trying to get in from the side door. Well, opportunity starting to brew, but you have to be able to find the kills. I will say Shoxy is still not really able to put much together here. I mean, Rupert's on a good one. 21 and 18, 20 and 20 from Phantom. So they're getting the participation from most of the members. It just, you have to have this fourth one really show up because every single time we start to get into these 50-50 battles, you're seeing the diverse SMGs really start to pop off. There we go. Finally, three for one goes the exchange and SKRP through boxes can get into the hard point. Yeah, they're still in it, man. Regardless of them getting outslayed, at least two players getting outslayed. They're still right in this game. Now with only 25 seconds left, you're going to force Diverse to hit that early rotation. You have Neon playing that island player, just trying to contest for as much time as he possibly could. But once he takes down that first gunfight, that second player in KB should be ready for him. They actually have two players in that position, so going to put themselves only down by 10 points. But you are forced to break again into Diverse's setup over towards P5. Hard point opens up to the name of Diverse. Ryan in the corner, absolutely obliterated. Choxy just nukes him. 04 looking for an opportunity to challenge. Isolation is here. A little dance with the devil on the backside of Pillars, but it's three straight kills. And then the Ooh. fourth all. Oh, the team shot so good between 04 and Neom. It got tight. It got close, but Diverse find the break, and they can win here. And now if you are SKRP, you got to make sure your attacks are hit and blow up the trophy system. Try to get them off as much as you can on this point. The nade is not good enough. Actually, Phantom's name is going to be able to take him off. So SKRP, they're able to execute the break. But here comes Diem on the pinch. Always finds the timing, and he's able to Unreal. find the gunny. Another two in the feed, but his teammates are not getting the time. They can no longer win it here. It's going to come down to that P1 again, where SKRP have been putting on the show top mid. Every second is a big second here as we exit from P5. And you can see both teams very animate about trying to hit this as much time as humanly possible. To 232 to around 220. Anyone's game to this point. Phantoms opens things up. Uh -oh. Shoxy follows. Here we go. SKRP into the hard point. They have a chance to tie and even take the lead. Yeah, there it is. Your squad just got to hold down this first push. Phantoms get the call on to one, but it's 0 4 to start off the engagement fights. Ryan finds the second diverse. Have the numbers. They should find the break here. Kills coming through for 0 4, 235, 233. Split spawn situation here for SKRP. And Diverse actually kind of spawned parallel, and they get a read on this. Oh, no, it's gone terribly wrong. Oh, what a play from Ryan. Gets a perfect read on the situation. Now Rupert has to find a way to break. First kill is free, but he needs to contest this. Paul right up close and personal. Semtex down. The contest comes through. 249, 233. But the kills are just not here yet for SKRP. Neon from the corner able to find one. The break oh. is decent. And Ryan finds the final double to tally. The final second. And Diverse will hold on. Ooh. That's how he's starting today, Alan. I guess so. My God, that was a mixy real hard point indeed, my friend. But Diverse 
They were in control from start to finish of that game. You had such a big lead. All you had to do is make sure that you were rotating early. But then once the game got tied towards the very end, they made sure that they attacked from bridge side. Once you 0-4 open up with the first kill, then Ryan found the second. At that point, you have the numbers. But then when SKRP break back in, it's Ryan with the AR. He actually hits a great route up through the pre-4 side, comes to the side door, finds the final two-piece to close out the game. But a 14-point hard point? Okay, SKRP. That teamwork is showing even with a couple players going negative on a map like Rio. Yeah, absolutely the case. And a big turnaround there kind of in the end for Shoxy. I would say the last three hard points really started to pick things right back up again after what was like a 1-9 and nine start. At one point, he was like 13-28 and 28 or something. So he really started to put it together. KB was the one who ended up kind of slowing down by the end of it. But like you mentioned, it's just... Man, the speed and tempo the diverse play at the early leads, it just puts so much punish into SKRP on the map. They eventually were able to kind of at least quell some of the motion that was coming from SK or pretty from Diverse, but it just was, I think, just simply put, too little too late. Yeah, it was just too little too late, like you just said, man. When you're starting off the game down by at least 60 to 70 points, you're forced to make up for it by breaking into P3. A great hold over towards P4, but it's a tie game when you enter over towards the bridge and you're late over the rotation. That's one of those hills that's very difficult to break, especially if you don't find that initial fight. You have to take top mid, you have to fight on the lower side of bridge control, and you also want to be spawning on the preferred side of the map. That's not where P3 three is it's opposing side yeah you have more different angles that you can attack that hill but that verse was just moving a little bit faster like the smgs were frying off the beginning of the game once the skrp started out team working them showing a little more team fires that's when you were able to catch them off guard but it was always neom finding a route it was always all four popping an opening kill and at the very end it was ryan to find the final two off a great snap on the roof where Huge. that's just some ice man that's just some ice out of that verse to take map one I because if Ryan doesn't win that battle, it's not just the fact that SKRP stay in the hard point, but then they have a 2v1. Yeah, I think it was on the Paul who was the next one up. So, yeah, it could have really gone differently depending on the outcome of that one single motion of gunfight. So, great start for Diverse. Obviously, happy to have the win. And thanks to your big lead early, able to kind of garner just enough to squeak you past it. But SKRP start to heat up a little bit late. And I will say, kind of looking back and thinking back over the history of players like Phantoms and Rupert in particular... Great search and destroy players. I, I will say that the that Spanish team or the Mexican team that played, it was like Rupert and Infinite and Snoopy, and I forget who the fourth one was. Thresh was the last one. They were always winning the maps two and map five. So I'm expecting some good things here from SKRP in the search and destroy. Hopefully, obviously, for map number two. And then if we eventually get to five, I still kind of lean my weight that direction a touch. Yeah, this is the bounce back that they need. You have great S&D players, players who have been playing S&D for a really long time. But now you find yourself down 0-1. You still have an opportunity to potentially make playoffs with a three-way tie. But the search and destroy has to be guaranteed. You can't allow the momentum to go fully to the other side. Because then, if they're up 2 off the two insanely fast maps in Rio, they're going into a Karachi control where they're feeling that momentum. The SGs are flowing. And that's going to be really difficult to stop. So this is where yeah. you have to respond right here in the search and destroy to tie the series up at 1. Small update, kind of taking a look. Phase Black is currently beating the brakes off Space Fish Taco in their <laughs> first game. So, again, that's over in Group A. We're going to have a lot of potential tiebreaker situations. And this is the thing I always say, Jay, when it comes to challengers, after the fifth game of Round Robin games, when there's multiple tiebreakers, I just say, hey, I, I, I don't know who makes it in. I just work here. You know, yeah, we let yeah, that yeah. handle to Cop Pops. Let them figure it out because there's going to be some possible multi-team tiebreaker situations depending on results like we had said earlier. So it's going to be an exciting finish to the North American group stage here. And I promise you that over there in Phase Black putting the beat down on him, Joe has got 30. You don't even got to tell me, Alan. That guy has been <laughs> consistent 30 every single respawn. So starting off 1-0, it's great. But, like, we know what their issue is. It's search or destroy. We got to make sure yeah. we're playing our numbers correctly. Looking at it, Joe is currently 24 and 14. So. All right. See, <laughs> yeah, almost, uh, almost there. <laughs> this is one of those things, man. All right. So here's a look back at the standings. I guess you joined us here a little bit on the later side. Like we mentioned, we're looking at Diverse versus SKRP. And there is an opportunity here where there could be a three-way tiebreaker if Houston Spartans lose their matchup to Convoy Gaming and SKRP, of course, beat Diverse. On the other side, after kind of looking over the uh, who's playing who in Group A, there is the potential of a five-way tiebreaker at three and two across Group A from top to bottom outside of Bowser's Kingdom. So those are the things that we're kind of keeping our eye on. We'll give you updates as we get them throughout. But, Jay, this is you and I first time getting into the Rio search and destroy. Oh, yeah. Talk to me a little bit. 
I like Rio Search and Destroy, but a majority of this map comes down to simply taking top mid control. If you take top mid control, that, that also requires top bridge towards the left side. So you're basically trapping the opposing team, knowing exactly where they're going to go if you decide to take top mid aggressively. And that's exactly mm -hmm. what Diverse are going to do. They got bridge control. Now you know all the pressure is going to be towards a Paul X here for the first blood. Huge first. He does get stunned. He has help on the way in, but Shoxy will confirm the trade. Biggest thing about this is Neom is right here to help the defense for at least a touch longer while simultaneously keep your eye on number six in blue. Zero four is on the long pinch. Ryan watching the cut back across, but SKRP are going to have to re-clear this. And I don't know if Ryan's going to be able to get any info. He is now because Shoxy is going to peek him. But KB's there for the trade. So now 4 versus KB on total opposite sides of the map where they spawned. 45 seconds left on the clock. No one wants to play bad timing. Both players are just playing. I'm going to wait for you to run in front of me. <laughs> Although 4 will not have KB rotate back into his waiting arms. So now both players actually at the exact same moment reposition at the exact same time. Up top, here we go. Little battle. KB checking his close corners. Does he get the anticipation on 0-4? But all oh, 4 has got to second-guess himself. He goes back to check A. Not having seen KB, and now all of a sudden the post plant starts to favor that of SKRP. It's a 1v1. KB's just wrapping the entirety of the map, and so is 04. As he might have read this play beautifully, might cast the timing over towards Brick, and here comes the wow. fight, and 04 is able to win it. Little love taps at the end. What? <laughs> What a really long 1v1. Like, these guys are moving <laughs> on the total opposite maps exactly at the same exact time. 04 came to check it up through Eskies, but KB got some great timing there to put the bomb down. But then 04 wasn't mad about it. He was like, I'm going to take a nice jolly stroll around the entirety of the map. It's not that big. Eventually, I'll find you. Give you a little love tap and clutch the, one, the round one for my squad. Wow. Is it just me, or do you feel like this game has provided more weird COD timings than maybe the last couple? Oh, yeah. And it has to be the dead silence, right? Like without I, I think question. That, yeah. With, with, without question. You got covert sneakers. You also got dead silence. So players are not able to make plays off of their headsets anymore. It's all about the timings. And a lot of time, I'd be getting bad timings. I can only imagine the guys that are getting down and dirty. In the yeah. Smoke out over towards the box cross. As Diverse are not going to waste any time. Bomb being planted. Decent shoulder check. And then the follow-up pinch from Neom turns <laughs> into a clean double. My goodness, this guy's a walking double kill. He just literally just like runs and guns nonstop confidence in his veins. Instantly puts it in the 4v2. He's able to spot one with the crack in the door, trying to find the ace on the round. He's going to wait for a little bit of a teammate's assistance. Oh, he's going to be able to find it. But that round simply comes down to the aggressive plays out of Neom. He's able to find three as they put the pressure over towards A. You get the bomb down, a little bit of teamwork at the very end. Four up, four down. Very clean round right there to Diverse to go up 2 well. It's just so wild, man. I mean, thinking back to the Boston Grand Finals and now having watched over almost all of the group stage here in North American Elite, it just feels like there are some really, really special SMG players in the wings. Oh, yeah. I mean, unreal, is, dude. The speed, tempo, the clean shots. It's just, it's just different. It's just so, so different. Alan, these guys child one shot. Like, I'm telling you, I know. it doesn't happen in the pro scene, you know? Like... <laughs> But here we go, right into round number three. Phantoms and his teammate combined for the first blood onto Neom. The trade is going to be there from 04. Instant 3v3, but that bomb is getting planted. Yeah. Then you need Ryan to become part of this play here if you're looking for the retake from Diverse. On the flip side, SKRP are very well prepared for a post-plant setup. Phantoms is going to watch the flank. He could get caught with some poor timing here. Has he heard 0-4, though? He kind of gut check reacts and... Maybe even pops the door just to see. Doesn't see him initially. Wow! I mean, two bullets. That KB just got melted in front of our faces. Yeah, that, like, that's not normal. Now, all of a sudden, it's Phantoms left at a 1v2. He gets the info on a 1. There's only 14 seconds left. You got to try to play your life, but now positioning known. All you have to do is watch over him if you are Ryan. And he actually gets the timing on the defuse. So, a lot of game clock left. So he's going to secure that defense. But the fact that 04 walks away with that kill, Unreal. Alan, like, that is insane. It looked like it was two bullets. Oh my <laughs> like, God, uh, it's a shotgun. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And I know everyone in the lobby or that's watching is thinking, my, my rival doesn't kill that fast. No. <laughs> I mean, <not. laughs> everyone in the world is saying my rival doesn't kill that fast. My dude's on negative ping. Like... <laughs> <laughs> Wow. 3-0 start for Diverse. 
SKRP, this is one of those rounds you just kind of have to have early. You drop yeah. 04 in the fashion that we've seen to this point, and it's just the mind games become almost too big to overcome. And it's just been an easy textbook for Diverse. One attacking round, and just put a whole lot of pressure towards A, and they're going to go right back to it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Get some info into one player in towards the garage. Here comes the double child, the nades to make sure they clear that out. They're just going to try to get this bomb down. Shoxy's still in a position to contest. And I love this, too. Just hold a little bit of utility. Use that to confirm that no one can challenge your plant. Just get the bomb down. I exactly. love it. Just as much as we've seen First Bloods be converted a vast majority of the times for round wins, you could say the same thing about post-plant setups as well. Because now you've got a 2v2, 2v3, pardon me, but only 25 seconds on the clock. Neom does get tagged. Check comes through. And they don't even even read it. Neom for the first, and now you've got 0-4 on the other side. What? I mean, hold me. This is terrifying. I'm telling you, Alan. These two right here in s and D, when they whip out the SMGs, they know a lot of the timing. Neom puts himself in a cheeky little angle to find that first kill. Slides onto the second while 04 wraps all the way from garage to rewrap towards boxes to make sure he has a different angle of approach towards that site. So it's like that's just so in sync. That's next level gameplay to those two players. As they find themselves on a little bit of a streak, but diverse up 4 0, oh, man. Like SKRP, you gotta show life here. Unreal. SKRP. Looking for that same mid-controlled nades. We'll go back and forth on both sides. Although, look at the quick run from Diverse. And wouldn't you guess it? It's Neom and 04 on the quick pinch. Yeah, they're the dynamic duo. They're already finding themselves. Oh, they pushed up past P2. But you see 04, he's taking the long, long route while Neom decides to go on the short one. But you see the rest of Diverse, they're just waiting for their teammates to get any ounce of info that they can get. But it's going to be 04 to start it off. He spots one, but the first one goes to Paul Axe. But look at the quick follow-up. I mean, it's just everything feels like it's just completely overwhelmed. Phantoms, what? Gets tagged at long range by 04. Rupert, good shoulder check. Knows that no one's on for the defuse. Now the final fight with Ryan. But, oh, 04 from behind. Wait a second, Ryan's hopped this. Rupert's trying to get there. Oh, my goodness. It's freaking perfect. It looks like these guys have been playing together for 15 years. I don't even know if they're 15 years old. <laughs> And Rhea also just came out, Alan. Keep in mind, this is our newest map in all of our maps and modes. This is the newest one. They got this one down to the T. The SMGs are finding all the timings. Everything is working out to perfection. When a player's getting shot, you got one going on a deep flank to eventually shoot him in the back to keep your teammate alive. Even with 10 seconds, Rupert, all he needed to do was get one kill to eliminate that player off bomb. That just wasn't enough. 0-4 in the right position. As Ryan stuck to defuse one round away from the clean sweep 6-0. And it's just like we've seen, obviously, times where it's just like, hey, I'm going to hop this, you know, play bodyguard for me. And that usually works out. But that was like 04 saying, yeah, I got you. I'm still half the map away, but I got you. It's just <laughs> unreal stuff. First blood finally tallied for SKRP. No trade here immediately for Ryan. So we'll go into a very early 3v4 or 60 seconds on the clock. Yeah, this is already an adjustment for SKRP. They said, we're not going to allow you guys to take A again for free. This time it's Rupert assisting Shotzi to find the first blood. So Diverse now in the 3v4. Yeah, Paul X working up through the bridge shot. He gets some info on the one, but he puts down a couple shots. It should allow that bomb plant to go down at B for free. Still a 4v3. Trophy down for Paul trying to hold on to this bridge position. Ryan right there with him. Almost gets the transfer for the second, but now 2v3. Timing not great for 04, so it all falls with Paul. And he's now giving up his position. KB... Just kind of keeps him busy while Rupert walks up from behind. Three in the round for Rupert, plus the defuse still to go. So on the board, but this would have to be a full sale. And wow, I, I just, I can't believe we're already 5-1. It feels like we just loaded into the lobby. Yeah, Diverse is just running around. They're just fighting all the times with the SMGs. But finally, an adjustment comes in from SKRP. They shut down that aggressive A push. They find the first blood. They retake top mid as a unit to put one on the board. And I think if you are SKRP... You're just playing the spread map right here. Like, all of the top mid, getting the bomb down for free, it's working, but you're just allowing them to take the rest of the map on you. So, I'd like to see a spread map here. Play for the two SMGs that are just dual stacking, running around together. Yeah. Neom getting aggressive this time over towards Vending, but caught by SKRP. First Blood once again getting a tallied. And defensively, there's really not any other follow-up here from Diverse to contest this plant. 
Paul thinking about it, and he's going to have a little bit of a pinch set up, but 0-4 can't quite get there. Now Paul stuck on Eskies, and Rupert's really starting to feel himself five in a row. Yeah, that's good stuff from Rupert. Open him with the first blood. You read the player on 0-4 going under deep pinch, and Rupert also executes to find the final kill. So that's two rounds in a row where he finds a three-piece. Maybe that might be the key to success. Just absolutely take over this game. Find three every single round. We will come back and win it. But he does earn a cruise missile too bad you can't use it. Is that a two round on the row for SKRP? But there was a full sale last week, Alan, so it there was? still happened. Yeah, remember that? It was never uh, what? Never. Syndicate? It was yeah. Syndicate, up 5 on Terminal. Yep. And they got slammed, 6 5. So it's still a possibility. Never say never. This much we've learned. Problem is, well, and I will say, you know, the cruise missile and search, even though it can't be directed, at least it can give you information. So there is an opportunity. We saw it at kind of earlier in EU during the search and destroy. Two different cruises were earned on invasion. They used them just to kind of read where the setups were. And it worked out nicely. KB is going to have a read here that 04 is playing in this corner. Just comes down to, again, very tentatively and very, pure, I would say, cautiously. Doesn't want to over -chow. There's the slide out. Waiting for just a little bit of help to make sure 04 would drop. Paul, though, with the trade, problem is Neum can't get back towards safety. And in the meantime, the bomb is now all of a sudden down. 2v3 retake scenario. Oh, but Ryan gets caught. Shoxy finds him towards top bridge. That was Paul X again left in the 1v3. You have one player sticking on the bomb. Paul is able to walk away with one, but Rupert again finds another kill on the round. I'm pretty sure he did use that cruise missile, like you said, for that information early on. So they were able to get those comms, use them to find the opening first blood, and retake successfully. So SKRP slowly but surely climbing back into this search and destroy on the back of Rupert Skywalker, who's absolutely taking over right now. Yeah, and he's definitely one of those guys that, again, just kind of thinking back to that team that really kind of rose to fame um, as Team Smog, I believe their name was, uh, Mexican-based organization. Obviously, the, the highlight of that team was Snoopy through and through, but... I thought Rupert and Thresh played great throughout that team. I think their highest placement in one of the elites was like second place. Like it was kind of like, whoa, okay, these guys are for real. And Rupert looking like he's having himself a pretty solid start to this year as well. Eight in a row, obviously, but the bigger news is seemingly has kind of slowed this diverse team down. Now it just comes down to can they clinically and methodically break them apart. Yeah, they're not taking any more risks. They want to make sure they play a nice little team setup, crossfire setup through top mid. And both angles of overextension are being watched. Now it's already been 30 seconds knocked off of the game clock. SKRP, they waited for the tax to be invested for them to now decide to go for the strike. Still so a trophy system down towards top mid. They're not even going to contest. They're going to wrap back over towards A with Phantom getting some early info on at least one player. How much of this does Ryan see? Not much. He's been stunned. So information is there. Follow up nade. Doesn't land, and wow, Rupert just gets caught on the timing. Quick reaction from Ryan gets us to an early 4v3, but the bomb is planted. Shoxy thinking about it, but everything backs away. Yeah, everything backs away. You don't want to give up a free first blood or a free second kill to put the team in a 4v2. Want to try to play your shoulders, set up the timings as Shoxy's able to find Ryan to make it a 3v3. Phantoms as well. Reads one towards the back. It's instantly a 2v2, making a 2v1. All over the top. Shoxy reads it. And any tag is a good tag here from Shoxi, just keeping Paul away from the regen. You've also got KB over the top, although Paul has, may have slipped the net, but good reaction time again. And okay, we said <laughs> no, never say never. 5-4 goes the count, SKRP still alive. Oh, Diverse is sitting there with their legs crossed. They're starting to sweat a little bit. You're up 5-0, you give up four in a row. SKRP have just been able to change the tempo. Whenever they find that first kill. Because now they're currently down 4-5. Back on the defensive side. Shotzi two kills off our internet cruise missile. Simply just for information. I think if you're diverse though. We just all out aggressive top mid. And make them outgun us to lose this round. Yeah. that's, that's I like that call. Thing is diverse. are just going to four man stack over towards A. Shotzi looking to get aggressive on this defensive setup. And he is getting naded. To high heaven. Help is on the way, but it's taking some time. Phantom's able to at least stop a lot of this hit. That's the bomb carrier down over the top of the A site. And now Diverse are kind of stuck once again. I mean, these adjustments from SKRP have been flawless. This has been perfect, man. Phantom's got there at the right time to keep his teammate alive. Bomb's now down over towards that A site. And Diverse know exactly where all of them are setting up around this bomb. 
So they're trying to play for an opening kill. Neem throwing shoulders. Everyone's trying to find a kill. Paul X does. Eventually starts it. He's able to find two. But KB in the corner does the exact same thing through Box's side, leaving now Paul by himself, requiring the ace. Has not collected the bomb. Slides over. Ruper nearby. Clean shots from Paul, but the follow-up is there as Ruper did not go too far away. Able to confirm the trade, and here we go. Round 11. Five rounds in a row. Looking for the full sale. Oh, man. They brought this one all the way back. Phantom saves Shoxy. Because he knew there was at least four players contesting him over at A. But the fact he's able to walk away with that first blood, you force Diverse to now slow down. You slow down too much. And you allow SKRP to pick you guys apart. They brought it all the way back from down 05 to round 11. Who wants it more? And what's the play call here? Diverse on the offense. Looking to head up towards mid. Nades from both sides. Very cautious. No one wants to get blooded by nades. I mean, no trophy systems that look like even replaced over towards Esky's side. So everyone kind of just monitoring the situation. Bomb making its way up, and it's going to get planted, at least attempted to. It looks like SKRP, they want to go quick. Stuns are through. They don't see anyone besides the one player exiting, though. Oh, but the one player exiting leads to the first blood. Neom finds a second. 04 and Neom take over in the round 11. It's all up to Phantoms left in the 1v4 with only 30 seconds left. Just too tall of a task as he finds the first. But yeah, nah, this one's GG. <laughs> yeah. But he's completely stuck here. Ryan just playing with his food. Not even ADSing. Here comes 04 from behind. That will do it. Wow, man. It's just... You kind of felt for a moment there, like SKRP is just like, hey, we're down 05. There's nothing to lose. Let's yeah, just make sure they strategy. stop planting the bomb so darn quickly. Yeah. That ends up working. It's like, okay, now we're cooking with a little bit of oil. But then they get to the round 11, it's just like, they completely change. They just don't run the same kind of mentality that they had from the previous defenses. They kind of give up a lot of space. They're trying not to get blooded by nades. It's just, it's almost too cautious, it felt like. That's the only thing that's scary about it. When you're down 05, you're just saying, all right, nothing is working that we're calling out, so probably do whatever you want. Let's just set some pace up and start yeah. going. But then when you bring it back round after round, you're like, okay, now we can start to slow the game down. But then when you get into a round number five, you waste all your attacks through top mid. By the time you use your second rotation attacks, they have trophy systems. They are ready for the push, ready for the instant retake. Like you said, it was just too slow right there, too safe. From SKRP on that defensive setup. You give up the free bomb plant. Diverse. Make you pay for it. As they walk away with the search and destroy. All the way in around 11. Such a nail biter of an <laughs> S&D. But they find themselves up 2-0 in the series. Yeah, walk away with it's one way of saying it. Uh, limp away with it. Maybe yeah. another. <laughs> After Crutches the quick start. <laughs> wow. What a bounce back. And this, again, one of those moments. You kind of look towards the hard point. You follow it up with the search and destroy. Like SKRP. Make a go of it. It's just too little too late. It's just I hate to keep going back to that same cliche and that same phrase, but it just feels like it's one of those situations that they're just not quite getting the quick enough adjustments on the diverse to stop them from playing with this quick tempo. We saw it in the hard point, quick rotations, quick zones, quick hits from all across the map. Now here into the search and destroy, quick plants, quick action for first bloods. It, it just felt like SKRP took a little too long to adjust. Yeah, they took a little too long and Diverse, they were happy as hell that they were doing that because they played back-to-back -back Rio where they know they can set the pace and they yeah. did not slow on based off of map number one. And now, let me tell you right now, Alan, losing 6-0 is way better than losing 6-5 because <laughs> their momentum is probably shot going into this map number three. Yeah, that's going to be uh, the Karachi control, but we do have a second stream going on at the same time here. You can find it on the YouTube.com slash COD Challengers kind of YouTube homepage. It's Lore Gaming going up against Met Brooklyn. Uh, this Lore Gaming team, previously known as Good Kids, were picked up, what, five days ago? It was right after the first games from last week, and they've looked pretty solid to this point, and Capital is on an early rampage. 73-3, oh. to three and Capital hasn't died yet. Oh, he said that, I don't know, big back bull and just roaming around red. Just setting the tone. Now he's going to invest that cruise missile simply just for the info. But 83-3. to three. If you're Omid Brooklyn, keep in mind, this is a W that you need to get. Yeah. You're sitting at 2-2. Two and two. Lower sitting at 3-1. and one. They walk away with this one. They're top of the bracket. Like, that's easy for them. But you will slightly not have an opportunity to make playoffs. You need to start to turn up. Yeah, they, they will be at 2-3. and three, And then you're just kind of hoping and praying that the other matches force some sort of a three-way tiebreaker. That's kind of what's... At hand at the moment, not a great start for Tyler Noisy or Darkside. They combined two and thirteen. 
as Noisy will drop again. Flames holds on to at least some control here at P3. Classic still looking for the break, and he's going to find himself a double. Noisy right off the spawn. Good for two, and that'll be enough for Mitt Brooklyn to get back into the hard point. Well, that's good stuff. I'm on Mitt Brooklyn. They needed to stop the bleeding, and some much-needed time over here at the P3 to walk away with the final 25. Because you are going to have a couple players late off the rotation, but they're still holding on, trying to fight back into the game. Indeed the case. Again, if you want to watch that one, we'll try to get to it, depending on how long our series goes. But you can watch that one in full by heading over to the Bravo channel, which, again, is live simultaneously with this one here on the YouTube.com slash COD Challengers kind of YouTube homepage. Uh, other update, uh, FaZe Clan Black are dominating Space Fish Taco. 250, okay. 132 <laughs> sub base, 60 search and destroy on high rise. So, oh, yeah. They that, only play high rise. I promise yeah. you. See this in top heli, like... <laughs> We know exactly what they're doing. Why do they only play in high rise? It's like we casted that match. That's how yeah. much. They're... <laughs> that's too funny, man. Uh, so that's going to be something to keep an eye on. Again, Space Fish Taco are going to be fine. They'll make it in no matter what. But Face Clan Black are looking to make sure that they also secure their future, uh, making it to playoffs. So that's all the action kind of going on in Group A. Uh, the bigger news here is, again, what we've already framed up, SKRP have to win this match if they want to have a chance at making it to the playoffs for Season 1. And it's not big. Been, well, I, I don't want to say it's not been a great start because both maps have finished with close score lines, yeah. but it's because they haven't had good starts to the maps that they found themselves 0-2 down. Exactly, and that's a scary thing. Now that you lose a very close hard point, you go down 0-5 in a search of destroy, you bring it all the way back to around 11, and you decide to play slow. All the momentum is shot. Someone needs to try to spark this team up, and I'm looking at the veteran guy in Phantoms who, on a map like Karachi, he's going to put himself in a lot of positions with that AR. We know if you're roaming around red, that's where the SMGs need to put themselves in a position to dominate the game, but the ARs also have to be able to hold down lanes. So the way that Phantoms has to get his team back in it, take over right here, right now, with your backs against the wall. Love to call. See how things go. And uh, we were going to jump into the Karachi control, but it looks like they may have had a reset in the lobby. So we'll go back over and continue to look into what's going on with Amit versus Lore. And, well, the tally hasn't gotten much better, although Amit is at least fighting back in some regard here as we head over towards P1 again. But clean kill feed comes through for Lore. They'll get the scrap time, and they've got high ground control around Rubble. Oh, yeah, this is scary because Lore can start to pull away with this game here. They know exactly where over Brooklyn are coming from. All through that white truck side, trying to overextend through left. It's going to fall into the hands of Johnny. He does fall. Great shots out of bank. The contest is already going to be here in towards P1. It's a 2v2 trade. But it's the rest of the moment, Brooklyn trying to hold it down to this team. He's able to get to him gunless with the beam to take down one. Now, lots of great damage out of gunless. Dark side, able to respond, though. And I'll say, considering where Amit Brooklyn had just spawned on this break attempt, they do a pretty decent job of giving themselves a look at the hard point. They just haven't been able to fully break it down yet. So more time being earned here for Lore Gaming, and it looks like for Omit, just don't lose this left side of the minimap. Make sure you set yourself up for P2 because you're going to need to get a full 60. Yeah, you need to make up for it this time at that P2. And so you have Flames already backing up, trying to play safe for his teammates as they still try to contest through the middle of the map. But it's a lot of players from Lore, multiple high ground positioning, but they can't take down Noisy. He's able to find two. Capsule is there for the trade. Johnny in towards the hill. At least that's up cap for that one. But it's still almost a 90-point game. As Omid Brooklyn are fully set up in towards the cafe. Here comes Lord through red. Trying to break all out through bottom ticket. Clearing out all the space. And, oh, this is too simple already. Three straight kills coming out. Flames also being tagged over to the hard point. Capsidal making life hard. Backside yellow. Trades come through, and that allows Johnny to get into the hard point. Mitt Brooklyn will be spawning behind over towards the top jump. And the only thing really watching this are long crosses. Gunless in particular with his AR is trying to do what he can. Capsidal on the back, and no, the break looks like it should be good unless Johnny can continue to go ham bone, but not happening. Break is in. Brooklyn find themselves some time. Yeah, so much needed time for Brooklyn. Now you're forced to try to execute a break over towards the next hill as well with three players from Lore already spawning on that side of the map. Bink reads the player that spawns across. So at least they have the numbers, or at least a 3v3 scenario here. Flames is going to be able to come up behind this player towards top three. Now Cap is spawning all the way across the map. Oh, and Brooklyn, this is a perfect rotation. Yeah. They can answer with a great 60 hold to tie this game up if they can hold this one down. And a big bounce back from Noisy and Dark. We said it. They were 1-13 combined to start this map. 
And now all of a sudden, they find themselves right in the mix, if not possibly leading their team in overall KD. 171. That's what it's been stuck at for Lore for what feels like an eternity. You've got Bink on a bit of a pinch, but Capsidal with a perfect read. 4v2. Break tip on the way. Flames trying to hold one side, and it would have been dark on the other, but not a single kill comes through. And that just feels like the second time we've seen it where Lore Gaming set up or break attempt just completely shuts down a mid. Yeah, that was just too easy. They sent two players through red, one player out the middle, one player through three story. They all find their one-on-one -on -one gunfights, execute the break with ease. And now Omen Brooklyn with only 20 seconds left are forced to make a decision. Do we try to contest this? We, are, we know we're going into a P4. We're not. Neither squad is going to play for a lot of that time. Yeah. More about the map positioning. The more that they're making a tough decision here, they're still trying to contest it. It's still lower gaming. Walk away with a lot of that time. They're up by still 80 points. And this is such a heavy commit to a hard point that's already gone yeah. here for a Brooklyn. I mean, that break attempt may have given them 10 seconds, but they found it cleanly. But now you're just kind of stuck over towards market side. Very peculiar decision-making coming through for Mitt Brooklyn. The good news is they do have some high ground control, and they've used it nicely to make sure Lord Gaming doesn't get into the hill. But... This is going to be a 50-50 battle here over the top of the fourth hard point. Yeah, they're just keeping it mixy. At least keeping it white. They prefer that side. As they find three kills, now you can hop on towards the point. Try to soak as much time as you possibly can with only 30 seconds left. But you see two spawns for Lore actually make it three. Are going to be gifted a rotation over towards next. Going to fall into the hands of Flame. He's the only one here. He's one shot. Wow. He actually wins the first gunfight. How long can he try to finesse in this position? Not that long. As Classic lines it up with the nade, Classic takes the head glitch, and that's going to be Lord Gaming winning a rotation with an opportunity to close out the game at P5. Yeah, and they're getting scrap time at four. And once more, you got Dark going to reach out the guy at old. You need to get here to help break down this 3v4 on the new time. And there's Classic and Johnny at the ready. They get a perfect three out of it. Brooklyn, noisy trying to force it, but only can get a team kill for what it's worth. It's just, man, that's what, three times they've seen a bit Brooklyn try to contest five seconds of the scrap time when they could have had a 4v3 at new yeah that's that's just boneheaded place right there out of dark we can't contest that guy for five seconds i know he's the guy that could potentially set up a pinch play but you have the numbers off the rotation all you have to do is win those trades and potentially flip those spawns to get some much needed time but finally with 30 seconds left they execute the break they spawn in towards the back but it's still a 70-point difference. Lore are only going to put one more chance at this one. They're both focused on taking control of top three as Gunless is already trying to take that side of the map. He does get gunned down, though. So, Omen, you need the answer, and so far they're doing it. Yeah, quick shots from Flame. Okay. And low HP turns it into three in a row over the top of the hill. Scrap time going to go the way of a mid. Wow. Big gunfight between Johnny and Bink, which Johnny wins with a rival nine at some significant range. Amit's still able to get into the hard point for now, but the lay of the land still favors that Allure Gaming. They just need to find the kills and then they can break. Yeah, just one break is all Lord needs. Potentially call game. Classic starts it off with the first kill. Dark throwing a couple shimmies, dancing in towards the P1. Teammates are dropping all around him, but the nades are strong from Bink. Still Omer Brooklyn holding on. They're reading this place perfectly, and they yeah. were able to flip those spawns as well. So Classic has to take his time. Person that's only pushed out towards Junk. You have Johnny going off the rotation to make sure everything is safe for the next hill. But you still have a couple players from Lore trying to contest this one. Yeah, there's a lot of individual gunfights that are going to ensue across the old time here at P1. Dark eventually taken out. Flames could only find one of what needed to be essentially three. Still an opportunity for Bink to jump right back in. And now, hold on a second. With Classic falling, the only one who's here is Johnny. Not stunned. Not naded. Here's the first check. Gets it cleanly. Tries to slip away, but falls. And we're going to have another photo finish here as a mid Brooklyn are going to get to the hard point first. Oh, my God. They're able to sniff out Johnny. Now they win the rotation over towards next. Bink almost turns on Capsidal. But now you just have to hold. Both squads can win it here. It's going to be noisy in towards the bottom of the ticket, at least finding the trade. Just want to trade effectively if you are home with Brooklyn, but that's going to be three down, all into the hands of Darkseid. Just has to stay alive for as long as humanly possible. Help is on the way. Good double chow from Lore on the back doors. Flames finding one as he jumps over, but there's no trophy system to keep him safe. Noisy stunned up, and he gets put down. Wow, opportunities. I mean, we saw how many? Three, four different opportunities for Mitt Brooklyn to set themselves up with a good hold. Just did not fully work out. The patience, the setup from Lord Gaming on their break attempts were nearly perfect every single time we had them. So Lord Gaming take a big first map in that series. Again, that is our Bravo matchup that you can watch in its entirety uh, on the YouTube channel. But it just felt again like 
setups not coming through successfully and just so many hits of old scrap time that really didn't feel like it was worth it and you keep in mind like you kept the game very close at the at the end like if we eliminate those plays where we're isoing the last guy for the final five seconds make sure we're setting up properly for the next you can probably execute a break at that p5 not at 30 seconds probably at 45 and the game completely changes but they were just still another team that starts slow into the game they get active towards the very end but omid brooklyn they set themselves up once they found johnny they just played really slow in towards Cafe. When you play slow in towards Cafe, Lord know that they have the positionings of red, so they're going to get those close spawns. If you don't win those next set of fights, or at least be aggressive in towards bottom ticket, or try to push out red, that's what allows more ways of Lord Gaming to come right on in. They had the spawns, they had the numbers, they won the gunfights. And then when you're forced to just single-handedly jump over that dumpster every single time to try to break V2, yeah, you might as well call GG. Lord yep. Gaming take map one. Wow. So they've got double high rise to follow with potential of a skid row and an invasion. No Rio here in this series. And for Mid Brooklyn, trying to just find a way to regain as they head to map number two. But again, that is our Bravo matchup. Our primary focus will still stay with Diverse versus SKRP. And we find them in the middle of their first round here of control on Karachi. Diverse, well, they are well, dominating. Yeah. Uh, one tick of progress is all that has been given. A 20 plays nine. Uh, yeah, okay. I guess the 10 minute, 15 minute break, whatever the hell we just had, is not good enough. Ask RP. <laughs> that verse said, ah, we're going to continue to put it on you. They dominate on the first defensive side. Like you said, only allowing one segment, but they outslayed by a trillion. Because now they're up 1 0, up 2 0 in the series, up 1 0 on the control. But to the attacking side, they go. I think if you're diverse, let's just do the easy work. Probably go for a four stack at eight to make sure we guarantee yourself, just in case it gets to that round number five, that defense. Yeah. Opening options. Look like it's going to go just kind of default over towards A here for diverse. Defense splitting their focus a touch kind of between the two. And to be fair, Neom is playing over through red and he's already gotten to fire that is not where you want him to be and on top of that you've also got a team nade this is not what you want to see if you're an skrp fan first tick already gone second may also be gone as neon is making life difficult on the rotation to be and yeah this has been a pretty flawless opening here for diverse yeah, it's a great opening, a and read. now they read the player on Rupert as well, who's trying to overextend through Chicken Coop. He's actually able to win the gunfight versus 4 So he finds himself on a 5. Players are still trying to sniff him out. The stun hits. Neem is able to find him. So now they're not on that A point anymore. So a couple players from SKRP just setting up for that post play. You have already a player in shocks. He pushed out towards Junk. You're forcing all of Diverse to overextend or hit up the middle of the map. And that's exactly what Phantom wants them to do. Good shots from Phantom. Shoxie also following up. Means that this play for Diverse has to start winning some gunfights just through the middle of the map. And Rupert getting aggressive. Not quite able to find the first kill top, but eventually tracks it down. I think he may have seen the second contestant in the form of Ryan as well. Yeah, Rupert seems to think that there's going to be somebody else nearby. And, well, doesn't make much of a difference. Neon from behind gets on the zone, plus finds the kill. Second ticket progress going to get locked. Yeah, second ticket's about to be completed as it comes in from 4 Staying alive in towards the point. Lines up the shot onto KB. But SKRP, they have decided to give this one up. They're forced to play now on a minute 30s defense over towards this B point. Liam's trying to isolate Phantoms, the guy that was blocking the spawns for his teammate, but he gets an assistance right there from Rupert to keep that positioning. Even though time does get extended, you have exactly, hey. you have diverse exactly where you want to as KB finds three. Yeah, huge. That stops any rotation through the OE. And like you mentioned, this is going to force spawns to be pretty treacherous here for diverse. KB just making himself as displaceable as possible, and Diverse are completely stuck, and this is about to get really punishing if they can't find kills. Paul up top, can't find an opener. Shoxy just holding on what the previously captured A zone had. KB looking for some trigger discipline. That works out nicely. Read into Paul X. Clean shots. Doesn't find the kill, but damage has been dealt. 19 v 13 with 50 seconds to go. Yeah, Diverse is still trying to find a way out. They have not been able to get out of their spawn. And wow. Right up through the little map might be it as Rupert lines up great shots onto Neom. But now Diverse are able to get out. There's still 40 seconds left. You have players going on a pinch. This, might, this play might simply come down to what can Paul X have done on the back end. Yeah. Phantom's tucked in a corner. Paul similarly so oh. on the other side. It means that spawns for both teams. going to be a bit messy here. Phantoms is still up. They have not found Timmy around the back. They're still looking for him, too. That's the thing. It's just like, he's got to be here somewhere. But it's taking so much clock. 15 seconds to go. 
And now you have to kind of convert. Phantoms will finally drop. You've got one player on the zone, or at least in front of it. KB nearby. Only getting the first shock seed deals with the flank from Paul. And now it has to be Ryan. Stops the clock at 5.4. Help on the way. It's Rupert right through the front of the hard point. And that will be enough to clear things out and get the defense to SKRP. Yeah, that's good stuff right there at SKRP. Perfect setup around that A point. Once they were trying to execute out towards Cafe, you had Phantoms just being such a nuisance over towards Junkyard. They found him in the final 15 seconds when they started at about a minute and 30. It's not going to get the job done for you. When you go around those pinch routes, you get him picked apart one by one and then just forced to hit that reset. A great defensive setup right there to SKRP to tie the game up at one. But now they're down by two segments. you got to make up for those. Yeah. Have to find more success here immediately. Good news is, got the hands back hot again. If it's anything like SKRP in the first two maps, that may be all they need. Because the slow starts in map one and two is what really cost them. Trophies are down. Nades are out. What, what happened, happened there? I have no idea what just happened. I don't know how Rupert just ended up nading his teammate at the backside of the middle. Heck, yeah. listen, unfortunately, it comes back to bite him. As the rest of his teammates fall through the middle of the map, that burst take all map control. They're still slaying. Great kill comes in on a Phantom. Now they can isolate Ryan as well. I thought it was going to be a great Whoa. setup. Even though they find the kill, it's still SKRP trying to get on out. Great shots right there out of Shoxy to find two. Makes that left lane open now. Looks like the tent poles were blocking some of the shots from the um, Phantoms on the zone. KB watching over from Bricks. That'll work out. Trophy system now gets placed. Second ticket progress. Also going to be locked as Diverse will work on a bit of a spawn trap of their own. Paul on Ooh. one side. Goodness, KP. I mean, like I said, I, this is the first year that I've seen him in Challengers, and he is shooting straight. Need to learn what this guy's story is because he's been pretty impressive. Yeah, he's coming up with a bunch of clutch kills for his team. Can he find another? No, he cannot. On to all four, two, top three. So now it's 40 seconds left. All of Diverse, they have you basically in the headlock trap. Yeah. Neam's holding down the overextension towards Coop. 4 through top mid. They're able to find three dead. Last player is going to be still pushed out, but there's only 30 seconds left. They have to commit 2A at this point. That opening should at least get them there unless Ryan just completely destroys <laughs> everyone. Plus a little bit of help out of Neam's nade. Follow-up kill is there. 13 seconds on the clock. KB, top bricks, last chance. Ryan giving him a battle. And there's just really no way that KB is going to be the one to get into the zone. He's trying for it. Clean transfer and tracking from Ryan once again. Paul with the pistol tries to do it all himself. Shoxy, last one left, will get thwarted. And it will only be two ticks of progress earned here, giving a massive advantage to Diverse heading into their next offense. Yeah, that's just too easy for Diverse. And it, it, once they get a clean three dead, they basically hit the reset. All the opposing players, and you're all spawning behind. They had a player pushed out towards junk. Basically, a majority of the round, they had top three control. It's just very difficult to get out on Karachi control when they have those two positioning because you're only spawning on one side of the map. And if you don't win an insane gunfight, you will continuously get put in that trap. It's now diverse. Don't really need to worry about the segments. They also don't need to worry about slaying because they're already doing that. Yeah. <laughs> they guaranteed themselves that round five defense just in case it gets a little bit scary. So we can take a calculated risk here. Let's try to go beer off the rip. KB dealt with by Ryan. Stuns on both sides landing. Trades decent though for SKRP. But Choxy was the only defender left over towards the A zone. And yeah, this isn't even like, hey, we opened up A. Let's go A. This is still trying to get themselves over towards the B zone for Diverse. Low health pools. Not stopping them at all they're still just saying we're still going this direction finally the clock will stop over on a hello how are you ryan shaking hands with shoxy before being traded and it looks like the first tick of progress is being worked on but even still diverse are still focused on getting over to b yeah they just have one player on the point that one player is neam who wins the one-on-one -on -one. so he's going to keep that time paused the rest of his teammates all have pressure over towards the cafe shoxy's able to at least catch one off of the cross but Neam decides to give up A. He's like, oh, no, you guys are having too much fun on that side of the map. I want to come join the party. <laughs> Fortunately, he's only able to get one for his endeavors. But that's already the second segment at B. About to oh. get complete. They're finding all the kills in the feed. Diverse my cold game right now. This just feels like every time we watch Neam in 04, that they're just constantly putting together 1.5 KDs. Like, yeah. over and over and over and over again. They're doing it with SMGs, they're doing it with ARs, they're doing it on every map and mode combination, it feels like. Unbelievable. 
So the extra 60 gets tallied. Three life advantage here for Diverse, but SKRB bounce back defensively. Got some map to work with here. Yeah, look how aggressive they are getting too. They're trying to, trying to push up into the spawn of Diverse. But Diverse are already out. They have one player over towards the bridge side. Everyone else already pushed their way <laughs> right through red. Ryan oh up God. close and personal wins that one-on-one. -on -one. His trades all abound through the middle of the map, but Phantoms is able to find three, keep his team alive. Okay, down to a minute 20. Lives could be how this is won, by the way. 17 playing up against 12. Shoxy, Phantoms, still dealing a little bit of damage here. But, oh, that's troublesome. Two players will drop. Phantoms over the pinch, though. He's able to come right from behind, completely unexpected. And now he's on five in a row. And all of a sudden, that's scared. P off spawn are in kind of some good high ground position. They can still hang on this. Yeah, they still have in great position, but Phantom does not have the gun of choice. You would like an MCW from top three. So a couple of easier fights. We're trying to go for the jump shot with the rival nine. He's able to at least get one player weak. Give the info to his teammates. He's able to find one, but 04 now slips on out. He's a player trying to make a play happen for Diverse while the rest of SKRP trying to hold down the middle of the map. Wow. Paul Lex answers with two through bottom red. This might be it. Looking likely. Although, Shock C from Barrels able to line up a couple and then Rupert follows up with his trade. So, what was a 17 plays 12 is now down to a 5v5. Still plenty of time for this to come down to lives, but Diverse are playing from the defensive side of the map. One player spawns up into Phantoms. Neom, can he get this kill in time? Sure does, because Phantoms is right behind him. Neom doesn't get the full read, so the trade is in. 12 seconds on the clock. KB playing topside over towards Bricks. It's going to have to come back to the zone to help. He's now the last hope. He's been tagged up. Third tick of progress being worked on. Not looking likely for KB. Off the reload. The stack will be how Diverse get the offensive win. It got tight there for a moment, but... Once more, I kind of find myself going back to the same phrase, a little too little too late. Yep. <laughs> Something like that. That's exactly what it was, man. Diverse, they just came out swinging. They dominated in the first defensive round. SKRP, they were able to respond, but then the last two rounds, Diverse just set the tone. Again on defense, but only allowing two segments to go their way. Completely outslaying you, and then the game plan to basically be tied up in segments going into that round number four. They knew exactly what they needed to do, and that's yeah. if we can capture B, we're basically going to call the round. They were able to take B, keep the kills in their favor, and then in those final moments, Pollux opens up with two, dominates in towards top red. No more lives remaining for SKRP. Just a very easy win for Diverse to walk away with the three up. Wow. Okay, so that at least gives us some decision-making and some definitive action in terms of who has made it to playoffs over in Group B, simply due to the fact that SKRP had to win that matchup yeah. if they wanted to have a chance to break through. So that will essentially confirm Group B. Of course, the lagliners coming in at 0-4 mean that they didn't have a chance to make it. So it oh, just no. comes down to the order now of who finishes where between Boston, Convoy, Diverse, and the Houston Spartans. So we know who our four teams will be. It just comes down to their seating, but we still have... Have games going on in group a amit brooklyn playing up against lore we're in the search and destroy lore held off the comeback for amit and now we find ourselves in high rise tied at three and it's a 2v1 for gunless instantly as soon as we jump on in with 35 seconds left the buddy system for omit brooklyn over towards the propane tanks is trying to play the most efficient way to trade as gunless is trying to sniff them out but there's so much time being wasted on the game clock he's checking in behind enemy lines now it's down to 20. He's not getting an ounce of information of how they're setting up this round. This is looking like an Omen Brooklyn W. Take the lead yeah. up 4-3. One of those situations that you try to hope that you can break down the post plant deep. Oh, my God. Doesn't really work oh. out. Almost finds himself the devil, but there wasn't enough time to go for the defuse. So a little shaky there for Mitt Brooklyn, even though the round had already been won. And they'll go up 4-3. Okay, so just playing the game clock. You know, if you're banking in this situation, you want to make sure you go for the chow knowing that he doesn't have any more time to defuse it. But he's able to shut down Gunless in that 1v1. Take the lead in the search and destroy. Now up 4-3 to the defensive side we go. And if I can remember correctly, Omid Brooklyn, what they love to do is just all out pressure over towards that B side. Flame, mm. Fames likes to play really slow in the back of his spawn. Dark side loves underground. So if you can open up with the first level of the dark side underground, that might be your key. Oh, here we go. Quick action for Lore over the top of the ace site. Noisy 
Not able to get into position to read it in time. Flames at least follows up. That's actually under the bomb carrier. Classic going way deep. And then the Ooh. follow up from Dark Perfect with the SMG. Wow, that was just Lore trying to get right into the face of the defenders. And what initially looked like a good first blood, it's been completely foiled since that. Yeah, now it's Shawnee left in a 1v3. Information now gained. Flames still holding down that bottom blue position. And now that's two rounds in a row for Omar Brooklyn. Too strong on the defensive setup. Ready for that aggressive bottom blue push. Even though Capsule finds the first. The rest of Omar Brooklyn were there in the right positionings. To put themselves on top in the numbers. Now they're at game point. To try to tie the series up at one. Result from the phase black versus Spacefish Taco match. 3-0 to phase black. Okay. So that puts Spacefish Taco, Phase Black at three and two. The assumption is that Syndicate will take care of Bowser's Kingdom, which puts them also at three and two. So this essentially means that Amit Brooklyn and Lore Gaming find themselves in kind of one of those situations of Amit Brooklyn has to win this series to force a multi-team tiebreaker. Otherwise, only at two wins, Amit Brooklyn will be out of playoffs. That means you need to find this S and DW. Need to try to walk away with this one. Tie the series up at one. Great shots from Flame to get info early on. Onto the positioning of a couple players, but Dark mm. tries to time the hop up. Johnny makes him pay for it. There goes the first blood. Nearly gets into a position to take the gunfight, but not quite. 3v4 situation. Gunless at range, seen by Flames. Can't quite finish the kill capsule Ooh. right there to pick up to make sure the kill comes through. Bink down low, tagged, but still alive. Noisy able to secure one tray, but has to wait for the regen before he can consider a plant. And now he's by himself. Clean shots to Johnny, and he does have an opportunity maybe to isolate here. Just comes down to does he predict Classic on this right? No, he will not. And with that, Lore Gaming find themselves their fourth round. Yeah, Lore Gaming great on the opening first blood. Capsule great shots onto the player top heli. But then I'm pretty sure Gunless was still in the back of his spawn. Hits the wall bang onto a player and towards the B side to make it a 2v1. That sets up Classic for the final. So Lore Gaming still in the search and destroy. Stopped the bleeding for a little bit. Down 5-4. But need to have an answer on the attacking yeah. side. We can't be over towards A again. We got to slowly work this one into the B-bomb. Or if we're going to hard commit to A, let's not try to go too far forward here and yeah. drop our bomb all the way towards HUD. But it looks like they're going to take your advice here. Study is that's going to be a little bit slower, a little bit more methodical. Classic down low. Just going to hop the ladder and immediately see a wide open B site. He's done this with an MCW, mind you. So this is all about Lord Gaming setting up a very passive post plant, and they're going to be an even 4v4 with this. Oh, this is perfect. If you are Lore, you put the pressure on them now. To not try to run out of their base. Caps to get some info on at least a couple players, but he's just trying to finesse, trying to dance around. Noisy finds the first blood to top heli. Wow. Johnny down low. Good information. Nearly turns it into a double, but the trades are decent. Gunless by himself right on top of the bomb. Not even going to try to play a little bit deeper. Smoke is through, but this isn't going to fake him out at all. Just comes down to does he get a read? Oh, and the trigger discipline from Gunless. He's going to kill the clock off. There's the first kill. He can't get off the ladder. Still stuck in the corner. Shots are out, but noisy. Did he hop it in time? No. Oh, my goodness. Gunless just... Don't look at me. Don't don't make a noise. Don't breathe. <laughs> Just let me stay in the smoke. That guy is an MVP, former Call of Duty pro player. One of the, one of the best players at a point in time, and he shows it right there. The trigger discipline to not panic even when the smoke gets invested. He was able to spot both players, let them run right on by. As we got to take a look at it again. Keep in mind, he gets to this position with about 25 seconds left. All right, cool. That smoke is invested with about 20. He spots at least one player sliding in front of him. But the fact that Omer Brooklyn wastes that smoke grenade to try to draw him out and not stick to deep views, Gunless is able to ice up, force around 11. I mean, Gunless could have whispered sweet nothings into Noisy's ear as he walked right by him. Wow. Round 11. Lore Gaming back onto the offense. Very quiet start for both teams. You've got Flames deep. Gunless will read this. Shots are good, but oh, maybe a bullet away from finding the kill. We'll stay 4v4. Still a 4v4, but at least you get the info on the one. And he's able to line up wow. with the nade. Wow. <laughs> Gunless taking over so far in this round 11. So now you are in the 4v3. Stunned gets connected onto a player through the back middle. But I don't know if he's going to be able to spot him as that bomb is slowly starting to approach up through the B site. You have Johnny working through the on the ground. He could potentially find the second one if Dark gives up his positioning inside the site. Yeah, I don't think Gunless saw him, though. 
Classic trying to play for the plant. Yeah, Gunless was so focused on who was deep middle that he didn't see Dark's gun poking out from inside the B site. Johnny on the shoulder. Not going to be able to find much contact here. Two players for oh. a bit playing down low. Bomb has been collected, but where is it going? Gunless is trying to go deeper on the back middle. They've got numbers, but they don't have a lot of time. Bink may have read this. Sees Capsital. Shaky, though, doesn't quite get the shots, but the bomb doesn't go down. Now it's just down to can they find Dark in time? One second on the clock. Here comes the challenge. Johnny finds the kill with maybe 0.8 seconds on the clock. No freaking way. Oh my god! Darkside played that perfectly! Just getting the one player off the site, trying to play your life as best as you possibly could. All you needed was another .8 seconds. But Johnny, through the top helipad, able to position himself perfectly after Dark finds that one-on-one. -on -one. And then in the right moment, at the right time, is able to line up with the MCW to clutch up on the round. Lord Gaming. I sub after being down 5-3, walk away with the round 11, and now we're up 2-0 in this series, man. That is devastating if you are with Brooklyn. Jay, I'm old. I've already got back problems. I don't need our oh problems, God. all right, my guy? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Unbelievable set of two rounds in a row. It could not have been any different. Wow. Just wow. That's all I have. I've got wow. That's, that's the only word I have right now. <laughs> And then when you take a look at the numbers, like obviously Gunless sitting at 10 and 7. He had a 2v1 clutch. He had the first blood in round 11. 2,500 damage he was putting on. But the fact that Johnny is able to walk away with it at the right time. He was contesting Dark the entire time through bottom blue. But picks up the MCW, is able to take top heli and just clutch up at the very end, man. That sucks if you are on my Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah. You are in control of this search and destroy. You lose the last couple of rounds in a devastating way. And now you are forced to try to complete the reverse sweep to even make it into playoffs. That's tough. Unreal. I mean, <laughs> Gunless legitimately, like, he was trying to get out of the ladder and just beefs it. Like, <laughs> yeah, at that point, Too you got to commit. Dude. Like, you yeah. just got to commit. He's like, I can't jump down this ladder. I don't want to get bad timing on this guy. Coming up right behind me on the site, winning this close and gunfight. So he was just putting himself in a position to be ready for the fight, but thankfully it wasn't necessary. Unreal. And that was like 0.4, not 0.8 seconds left in the clock there Insane. between not being able to uh, get completely killed Tough. out and lose the round. So 2-0 <laughs> goes the count now for Lord Gaming. Again, what's on the line here as we look towards the high-rise controls? A bit Brooklyn have to reverse sweep if they want to have a chance at setting up a multi-team tiebreaker in Group A. Otherwise, only having two wins for a minute will not be enough to get them into playoffs. So here's kind of a look back at how things have unfolded uh, just kind of coming into today. The big news over towards Group B is we kind of had a must-win matchup as well between Diverse and SKRP. SKRP falling to Diverse in a 3-0 fashion means that in some order we'll have Boston Academy, Convoy Gaming, Houston Spartans, and Diverse all representing Group B in the double elimination bracket. Meanwhile, again, it's kind of still up in the air because Space Fish Taco lost to Phase Black. Lore yeah. Gaming finds themselves in this lockup with a bit Brooklyn, and SGP did beat Bowser's Kingdom. So what would unfold here is a five-way three-and-two tie, at which case we send it off to the lab and hope the scientists can come up with a solution of who's the top four. Yeah, home in Brooklyn, they need to figure out something. They need to try to find something with them with their backs being down 0-2 against the wall for you to make playoffs. Because obviously, if Laura walk away with this, they're going to be our number one seed in Group A. They've been sitting at 4-1, calm, cool, and collected. They're feeling great. But if you are home in Brooklyn, that's now two maps in a row where you did have a couple opportunities to win. Obviously, in the search and destroy, a lot more. You were up 5-3. Gunless clutches an insane round, and then 0.4 seconds causes you to be tied up at 1-1 in this series. But it's still not done yet. You're going in on high-rise control. You just have to hit the reset button. you got to show fight here have to have it we are going to jump over just a quick brief break though just between maps two and three so when we come back we'll have the high rise control must win scenario from here on out for mitt brooklyn trying to put together the reverse sweep if they want to have a chance at playoffs we'll jump back in with the action when we come back under this
Welcome back, everybody. We find ourselves in the last remaining game here in North American Elite for the group stage, and it's a very important one for Mitt Brooklyn as they have to find the reverse sweep to extend their opportunity at possibly making the playoffs. But uh, kind of in the break, gotten reports of what else happened in this group. Lots of 3-0s, lots of 3-1s. So map differential could be a big impacting portion of who makes it into the top four, even if Mitt Brooklyn were to pull this back and force that five-team tiebreaker situation. And Alan, we, I'm pretty sure in the EU region as well, both the matches that were on display today for the stream were both 3-0. So yeah, we might yeah. have all four series today on the final day of our elite matches be all 3-0s, which is actually insane to me. But Omer Brooklyn are going to be the team, backs against the ball, trying to figure out how they're going to set up on the defensive end. Johnny finds an opening through that flank, and that's already three dead. Lore on the point. Yeah, it's, you know, it is one of those things where after the first week of elite games, like we kind of talked about last week, Going from day one to day two, you don't have a lot of time to reflect off of your gameplay and make no. major you know, adjustments. Yeah. But going from week one to week two, you've got five days worth of scrims to make some kind of marked improvements. And, well, it looks like a lot of our teams have done so. Beacon already captured. Amit Brooklyn losing a lot of lives on this reclamation. And, uh, man, I'll tell you, it just kind of feels like, again, it's just too little too late. It's Amit Brooklyn committing for this time where it's already gone. And now Capsule to find himself behind enemy lines, but he is going to be sniffed up by Noisy. And he's able to find a second as well. So three go down. Last player up is going to be Classic. The rest of the players now coming off spawn for Lore Gaming. Trying to be... Trying to find a way out of their spawn as Johnny finds the opening kill. But just got to trade officially. You are Omit Brooklyn. Dark is able to find two. Noisy is able to clean up the final. Now all of Lore Gaming. Again, force they hit the reset. And yeah, Noisy is trying to be... As big of an issue as he can be, front side windows. Good follow-up kills from a bit, and Noisy has slipped through. Now on four in a row, has Johnny off spawn. Good for the fifth. Hit low, gunless, looking for the trade. Shut down as Noisy continues to build the streaks. Johnny again is like, ah, get me out of here. Teammate still spawning behind him, and Noisy still not done. Off the reload, has given himself more space, and a bit Brooklyn have gotten some major influence off this spawn trap. Yeah, Noisy is frying, but Capson was the only player out for Lord Gaming. He's able to find the first kill, and Gunless finds a second. So now an opportunity for Lore to get out of their spawn. Take a little bit of mid-map control, but it's going to be Omer Brooklyn fully set up for those pushes. You have Gunless working up that left side street. One player working through on the ground, and Classic trying to time this hop up. Does not have covert sneakers on, so he's potentially going to be heard. No, he's going to get the timing, find the kill, hop the point. Trophy system down, dark side right there to make sure that the clock keeps on ticking. 30 seconds to go. 15 playing 11. Bink surely has just been seen. Same can be said for Flames. Nice Ooh. shots from Johnny. Right back in. Dark side still playing bottom helo stairs. Eventually traded out. Noisy would have to come to try to save as much as humanly possible, but he is by himself, and he's looking for kills off this rotation. Finding one on the rotate in, but there's so many members that are already stacked here. Noisy for a second, Flames with another. Gunless, the last one left, can only find two. And we've got a 10v6 with 18 seconds on the clock. Yeah, only 18 seconds left. Floor Gaming, this is their last push. It all starts with at least finding that opening first kill. Johnny with some great shoulder work, but unfortunately, Noisy comes off spawn and is able to assist them. So with only five seconds left, is there anyone able to touch the point? Capsule will try to line it up through underground. He gets taken down. Dark is there for the trade. Noisy is there for the trade. And Omen Brooklyn holds strong on their first defense on the back of Noisy, having an insane yeah. sequence in behind enemy lines. Yeah, it's the first getting the spawn kills, but more importantly, the long route around the back again. When you start to get that triple stack on this A zone, Dark Side also has to be tipped a little bit considering that he found a couple of the key kills bottom side helo stairs so good effort there from it brooklyn to save the defense but i use the word save very selectively because let's be honest two ticks plus a zone good news overall for lore on their first offensive attempt yeah you're feeling good you're up five segments all you have to do is hope put them in a nice little trap keep yourself up in the tally column it's gonna be in a great spot to try to win this one but it's gonna be bank opening up with the first kill the rest of Lore trying to contest over to B Street, but it's Omid Brooklyn coming out on top in the trade fights. A couple players are coming off spawn. They're able to read Noisy going on the pinch. Caps it through the middle of the map. Is able to find two. Make it three dead. All of Omid Brooklyn off the reset now. Yeah, Caps on another burner here in respawn. Eight and three start for him. And now he could essentially do what Noisy had just done. Oh my. Clean shots across the board. Gunless on one side. Capsule on the other. 
Stuns come through. It keeps Caps out of the spawn, but it doesn't make a difference. Every single lane being locked down, and now Caps can just play this head glitch as long as he seemingly wants to. <laughs> yeah, he can just chill here until the stuns start to connect. Noisy finds the first kill. Johnny also gets picked apart through the top scaffolding, too. So now if you are classic and gunless, you got to play this one a little bit safer. The gunless already pushed up. Great angle of attack to apply pressure off towards this left window. The rest of his teammates know where the pressure's coming in, and they're still finding wow. all, all the kills. Another three dead in the feed. Over Brooklyn, back in the spawn they go. An absolute beatdown. Seven in a row, make it eight for Gunless. Just post it up, man. I mean, I know that Octane has taken the name as the turret, but Gunless is giving it a work right now. I'll tell you what. Four and 12 from Bink, just having a real tough go of it on both sides of the zone. And a bit Brooklyn. This is it. Last chance. Gunless. Lots of damage. Can't quite find the double-digit streaks. And hold on a second. A bit get four straight kills. Johnny's the last one left, and he's going to be pressured on the A zone. Clock will stop at 3.7, plus kills to follow. Two ticks are on, or at least two members stacked on. Gunless trying to give it a go, but hold on. Now all of a sudden, we're on both zones at the same time. You know, Mitt, they're trying everything that they can. Wow. To stack both of these points with only 3.7 seconds left. One segment done at B. One segment done at A. I would like to see a team stack so you can extend this time. Because a couple a couple nades come over the top or a couple kills go the opposing way. You are going to lose this round. And that's exactly what's going to happen as they go three dead in the feed. Dark dancing around in towards the generator. As at least able to walk away with the second segment. But that's not going to do much. Lower game and too strong on the defense. Too much split decisions right there at yep. home at Brooklyn. And I'd like to see just a stack towards one point when you get a clean four dead. But you allow Lord Gaming to reinforce. Hit a couple attacks. Gunny's still hot. As they only allow, what, three segments on that round? Great yep, stuff out of Lord so. on the defensive end. And I can understand it to a certain point where it's just like it's so mixy. There's just you have to get on. It's A, desperate, B, mixy, probably in that order. And you say, we just got to hold on to a zone it, it, off spawn. It's just go to whatever's closest. Yeah. Go figure, emit, find four straight kills. And then it's just like, uh, I guess we'll just stay where we are. And so, yeah, definitely a moment to look back upon as we're going to get lower gaming onto their next offensive attempt. Three players already over towards A with the trophy system to make sure they can get there quickly and safely. First take is going to be gone. Uh, Flames is dealing with the damage he can, but second tick is being worked on. Still a little bit of help here. Caps, nice play, nice finesse. Looking for Flames. Doesn't quite catch him with the stun affecting him, and the second ticket progress will not fully be locked in. Yeah, the stun's just too good, but Classic takes down Flame, and Dark Side unfortunately has a team kill on the map. So now it falls to the hands of the last two players. Dark Side does fall onto the point, so Clock comes to a pause again. They're on that A segment, but they get cut down. Omen Brooklyn, just too much oh. pressure over towards the blue side. Johnny up close in person with the MCW. He's able to at least win one, but Omen Brooklyn, they withstand that pressure through blue. Now you're going to force low gaming to try to complete over towards B. It just feels like at any moment in time, this game can just like get a little bit off the rails. Lower Gaming just going with a lot of head steam towards this A zone and now have to kind of put a little bit of a pause into play as Noisy once again right back over to making life difficult off spawn. 21 and 12 from him. Good stun play from Johnny to at least confirm the kill, but he's still in a bit of trouble. Or oh is my he? God. Great finesse from Johnny. Dark side is now going to give him a go and catches a mid reload. So the trades are decent. A bit Brooklyn still holding on to the life lead. Yeah, and Flames is trying to say a lot through Top of Pain. And the crucial spot is trying to. Keep this positioning for his teammates to reinforce up through that right street, but he also finds the kill onto Capsule. Only 25 seconds remaining. And if you are lower gaming, you are currently up by one segment. Can we try to get any more done? As they have players already pushed up through the B street, but they're all getting cut down. Farthest player pushed up now is going to be Johnny. Sitting on the backside of Propane, he's already able to take down one, but there's 10 seconds left. We got to get a move on it. A couple of the kills in. Dark still holding over towards Crane. And now the only effort is through Classic over towards the A zone. Good clean first win, plus Gunless over towards B actually keeps him safe from any follow-up. Trophy not also going to allow any damage as Flames goes to the pistol, and that will be enough. But second tick of progress gets locked over at A. B still being stacked here. Three members on. Second tick being worked on. Good kills for a minute, though, again, and that will clear things out. Second tick for B, not locked in. So another three tick round here as Lore Gaming still hold the advantage in that progress. Yeah, Lord Gaming are still in ahead when you talk about the segments. But Omit Brooklyn, just great on the reinforcing. Trading effectively when they need to. And then even when Lord Gaming had three players stacked on a point, I would like to see at least one person not commit towards the fight. Force them into contest, but when you give them those long-range fights, you will take it if you are Brooklyn. 
As now they are up 2-1, back on the attacking side. And it has to be a great start off. You can't go 3-4 to four dead, allow Lord Gaming to put you in an early trap. You've got to you gotta try to make up in these segment fights. And it might have to be done by completing at least five. Yeah. Math checks out for that, Jay. Noisy. Trying to play through Elevator Alley. He's going to have Classic on the scaffold. And, ooh, Mixy gunfight that goes the way of Noisy's Renetti. So now Amit, once again, starting things off nicely with the first couple of kills. Gets them entry over towards B. Noisy in and out of the zone. Knows he's got a player in the corner. That's Gunless, oh. who will drop. Good follow-up kills as well as Flames keeps it safe. And this should be a stack here at B. Yeah, this is good work right here from Open Brooklyn. The exact start of this you want. Only two players dropping on your side. Six for the opposing. Now all of Lore Gaming trying to find a way out of their spawn. Johnny opens it up with a big kill over towards Crack Shack. Now you have a couple players trying to hop up through on their ground. Classic lines up the first one with the nade, the second one with the gunny. That's three dead. You take care of Dark, all four. Uh, now you're forced to hit the reset if you are Brooklyn. It's just kind of, again, one of those moments you kind of look at critically. Flames is just playing Observer from Top Propane. He's calling off the rotation while Amit trying to play for both zones at the same time. It just kind of feels like, hey, if you're going to just be calling out numbers, you may as well throw a second player on to B in some form and just get the extra 60 because now all of a sudden Amit Brooklyn are in a little bit of trouble making their way back towards the middle of the map. Yeah, but it's only 40 seconds left. You have to make these kills count. Great timing right there at a classic to catch Noisy on the drop down. Gunless finds the second. Gunless finds two on towards the street. He locates the third and lines it up on the flames. Classic also catches one all spawn, so everyone forced to hit the reset, and Gunless simply is not missing. Only 25 seconds left. Omen Brooklyn has to get out. Classic taken down by Flames. 18 seconds of the clock. Omit. Couple of good kills. Capped by himself. Sees a couple of players stretch. This kind of feels like the last offensive round, though, for Omit. They're not committing to one zone or the other. They're trying to play for both at the same time. Caps little finesse around the back. Bink. Puts him to rest. Six seconds on the clock. He's going to have to step on into A. Johnny watching the cross. Deals with the first. Noisy next in line. And not enough ammunition for Johnny to find the kill. But Capsital will put him to rest. And Lord Gaming once again. Another very definitive defense. But they only give away one tick. Yeah. And now they guarantee themselves defense going into round number five. Just great gun work out of Gunless, man. So many clutch gunfights up to that B Street. If he falls in any of those scenarios. Potentially an opportunity for Omid Brooklyn to stack that B point. But clutch gunfight after clutch gunfight now allows you to go into this round number five on the preferred side. And all we got to do is just do exactly what we've done in the last two. Just get a clean four dead, put him in the trap nice and early. What does the break off look like for Remit? They found, I would say, the vast majority of their success over towards the B side of the map. But that only amounts to so much in the scheme of things, when you haven't been able to find much success in actually capturing either of the two zones. 2-2 two -two split. Darken to take a little bit of a route out and around the buildings. Flames. He's going to get a little bit of assistance here from the propane tank blowing up on a Johnny, so kills are good. Clock will stop early as a mid get on to A. Yeah, will make it on to A, but dark side and his positioning is now known. One player on the point. The last guy is pushed up towards our window. Classic isolates him, pulls out the pistol, can't finish the kill on the flames. And an unfortunate team kill comes in from Gunless, but yeah. you are lower gaming. You have all of right street control. How long, though? Because Bink reads capsule, and everyone is trapped in. Wow. They're able to pause that game clock at A. Good angle here from Johnny. If he can just stay on top. Oh, oh my the God. The pull-up machine right now. Yeah. Gunless still keeping the streak alive. Second ticket progress was locked. The third was being worked on, but Gunless and Classic once again will clear things out. Johnny now on the hunt towards Top Heli. He's going to catch Flames moving towards B, and now we're under 60 seconds again. Lord Gaming with the numbers. Oh, big shots right there to Johnny to catch Bank off spawn. Gunless finds a second as well. So all you're looking for is the last player who was pushed out. You know that everyone else is behind enemy lines, and Capsule, it's time for you to slay. He's able to find two. Goes Bro. for the third as well onto Bink, and he still knows that the last player is pushed up toward the B Street. All right, Johnny, you got me. 35 seconds left. Home in Brooklyn in the trap. This is not good news. Again, admit, have to reverse sweep. Have to find a way to get a win to possibly see the playoffs. But Capital has other designs in mind as him and Gunless are on 12 straight between them. Flames eventually puts down the threat, but it just feels, again, like it's not going to make much of a difference. There are just so many obstacles to hurdle here as Gunless continues to put together high streaks. Flames gets across, but... He's not going to have a chance to make his way over towards B because Johnny's in their way. 
Last effort would have to be down to Noisy, and Capsidal is right there waiting for him. Lord Gaming finish things off with a 3-0. They will top the group, I believe. And for a minute, Brooklyn, they will not have a chance to see that five-way tiebreaker. It would have been cool because it would have been the first time we saw it in Challengers Elite, but not going to happen here. They will be eliminated and have to play for their next attempt at getting into Elite Season 2. Yeah, that's tough, man. Lord Gaming just came out with a better game plan. Probably a little bit better of the gunny. They were out slaying the hell out of Omid Brooklyn in, in that high rush control in general. They guaranteed themselves defense and they did exactly what they did all the other previous defensive rounds and that's put them in the trap nice and early. Great plays out of gun list. Great plays out of capsule just to get behind enemy lines. But even though Classic sits at 19 and 23 with 4,400 damage, how many times did we see him make a clutch two-piece? Absolutely. A really clutch one-on-one -on -one gun fight for his teammates to have another opportunity. Lord Gaming definitely made some work out of the five days that they had extra going into practice this week as they close it out in a clean 3-0. Yeah, huge, huge, huge. And really, it was the start from Classic that kind of hurt his overall KD. He definitely picked it up, like you mentioned, in those last three rounds. So, for a bit, Brooklyn, I, I think, you know, you reflect on this season, you were competitive. I mean, flat out, I mean, just about everybody, except for Bowser's team, was kind of competitive here in yeah. this first season of Elite. And I, I think, in particular, you should trust the process. I think that this four-man roster has a lot of potential, but what cost them were a couple of slow starts and just generally a couple of bad decisions, right? Yeah. You think back to the hard point, hitting a lot of scrap time, not getting good setups to where they were able to actually hold off the lore breaks. Kind of the same thing in the search and destroy. It kind of is a weirder one because you're up 5-3. You get 1v2 clutched. You get round 11. Not good news with like 0.4 seconds on the clock. That one feels a little bit, you know, maybe more excusable. But then yeah. here in the control, same thing, Jay. It just kind of felt like, hey, you've got success on both zones. Just pick one. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, you get a clean four dead. The decision-making has to be there, and it has to be a decision that's made as a team. Like, you guys should know, we get a clean four dead, we have to stack this point. We're not stacking this point that we're not playing it correctly. But the good thing for them is that they're very young. And one thing that I learned when I was a young player that I had a great coach back in the day, Rambo Ray, told me winning is teaching and losing is learning. So that's the good thing about it is that you're going to be able to lose, I mean, learn off of your losses here. You're probably not the best stage to not make playoffs, but at least when you come in the next time to re-qualify for Elite, you are going to be prepared to not make those mistakes again. Absolutely agree. Again, Challengers Elite, if you want more information of how you can play in things like the Cups or what's happening in Challengers generally, make sure you head on over to faceit.com for more tournament information, whether that be for the Elite or, of course, for future Cups that are on the way. But that takes us to the end of the group phase for both Europe and North America. But you don't have to wait long to see more Challengers Elite action because tomorrow we start all of the double elimination playoffs. We'll have winners round one, losers round one, and winners round two action before we we restart everything back up again next week. So make sure you tune in tomorrow. Uh, Jay, final thoughts on the group stage before we start getting out of here. Oh, challengers is lit, bro. I'm telling you, get y'all out <laughs> one shot. Like, I wasn't expecting it to be this fun, but these guys want it. They're dripping passion, and I can't wait to see what tomorrow has in store for us. It's going to be a fun one. Again, 2 o'clock p.m. Eastern time for the EU start. Three slots of matches, and that will roll immediately into North America. So make sure you subscribe to the channel right here if you want to see more Challengers Elite. And we'll catch you guys tomorrow for all the playoff action for Season 1 Elite.